field fast enough. I told the players uh, at the ball game yesterday that we we put ourselves into a, a crucial position. Uh, not only do we need to get back on the winning track, and especially at four and four right now, we're we're entering into a, a crucial part of the season. In other words, the Dolphins can't live in the past and must prepare themselves for their rematch with Drew Bledsoe, Ben Coates, and the rest of the New England Patriots. We'll talk about it here next on Sports Channel. From the Miami Dolphins training camp in Davie, Florida, Sports Channel is proud to present the Dan Marino Show. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm John Congemi, along with Dan Marino. And Dan, it's a little bit different setting than playing golf at Weston Hills, but I'm glad to be here. Good to have you, John. Yeah, it's good to be here. And last week, it wasn't so happy on Sunday at Co Player Stadium when the Dallas Cowboys came in. And it just seemed like they put it all together finally for the first time. They played a full 60 minutes. Well, there's no doubt that uh, the Dallas Cowboys are one of the best teams in the league. Coming into this game, John, they uh, they struggled a little bit, but they had everything back together. Coming back with Mike Worthing and you know Dion is, is is a great player. Uh, for us, it was tough. Uh, you know, we kind of hung in there a little bit, but in the end, we just couldn't measure up. Yeah, let's look at the numbers, and that's presented to us by Mobile. We'll take a look at some of the statistics, and I thought the most glaring statistic was the time of possession really kept you and that offense on the sidelines and Dallas really controlled the football. Well that's what's the glaring number right there, the time of possession and also the total yards. They had 482 total yards and they just threw the ball all over us. 363 yards passing and they also ran the ball well. Yeah, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar only 29 yards rushing. Uh, he averaged uh, just over four yards a carry but really didn't rush the ball as effective. But, but I will say that for, as far as our offensive line is concerned, they did a pretty good job running the football and as far as us throwing it, we were effective when we had the ball. Our problem was is we didn't convert on third down as much as we wanted to and, and it was a problem. And you see some of the passing yards right here. O.J. McDuffie was our leading receiver. Randall Hill made a couple big catches and uh, we just didn't have the ball enough, didn't have enough opportunities. And when we did get the ball in the second half, John, we had some turnovers. Yeah, the defensive statistics as well. When you have two defensive backs leading you in tackles, that meant that Emmett Smith was in the secondary a lot. Well, as far as tackles are concerned, yeah, you can see our defensive backs are leading in tackles. And, and, uh, and, it's, and also, it's because they were throwing the football a lot. <laughs> That's right. You know, not That's only right. running it, they were throwing a lot. We didn't, we didn't really get a lot of pressure on the quarterback either, as you see. You know, we had one sack and, and a couple passes knocked down. But... Uh, you know, the thing was, we just didn't put the pressure on them. And with all the talent that they have on, on offense with Mike Worthing and Dion, who is turning into a very good receiver in this league, uh, it's tough to stop them. Well, Jimmy Johnson was looking at this game the entire, the entire season. As you look at some of the defensive statistics up front, we really didn't pressure the quarterback as much as we would like. But Jimmy Johnson was looking at this game. He had it circled on his calendar for a lot of weeks, and he was really doing a good job looking forward. But after the Miami game, he had this to say. Dallas's offense executed uh, extremely well. Troy had a great day uh, throwing the football. Uh, and uh, when you go up against great players that have great days, you're going to uh, have a tough time, especially when they didn't turn the ball over a single time. And that's what's allowed us to win games in the past. We've been able to win the turnover ratio. Yeah, of course you want to get, as an offense, you want to be on the field uh, to make plays. And, uh, you know, we didn't have that much of an opportunity. But, you know, we did have opportunities uh, where we could have won the game. You know, people say you always learn from losses, but I, I hate to learn from a loss. And we just got to correct the mistakes that we made. You know, we turned the ball over. We, we, we had a couple drives, especially in the second half, where we didn't do anything with the football and put our defense in a bad position. So we just got to keep getting better and keep working hard at that. They, they played a lot better than we did today. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's what makes them Super Bowl champs. You're right. That does make them Super Bowl champs. The question I had for you, Danny, your first game back after three weeks, how did you feel going out? Did you feel like you were 100%? Well, uh, I wouldn't say I was 100%, and I wasn't as comfortable as maybe as I wanted to be, but uh, felt pretty good. The week before in Philly, I felt pretty good. All week in practice, I uh, felt pretty good. And in the game, uh, you kind of just let it go, and you turn it loose, and you play the game. And um, afterwards, a little soreness, a little soreness this week you know, during practice, mm -hmm. but it's going to continue to get better and better each week, and that's the positive thing. 
Well, as a friend and a fan, it was good to see you back well, on the field you, taking snaps. Yeah. We're going to turn to the Coca-Cola menu for today's show. And on tap for today's show, on the road with equipment manager Tony Egret. Randall Hill joins us as Danny's guest. Danny's tip of the week, how to grip the football. And we'll look into the New England Patriot game. How will the Dolphins prepare for that? It's all coming your way next on the Dan Reno Show right here on Sports Channel. Dan the Dan Marino Show is brought to you in part by Heineken's, true to the original recipe since 1886. Welcome back to the Miami Dolphin Training Facility in Davie, Florida. I'm your host, John Congemi, with Dan Marino. And Dan, I don't know about you, but when I go on the road, I have trouble packing myself. Well, I do too, and, and Tony Egler is our equipment manager. The one thing for sure is uh, these guys have a lot of work to do, and all the people that work with Tony and in the back there packing for road trips are underappreciated sometimes. They really are. And let's take a look at what Tony has to go through getting this Miami Dolphin team ready to travel to New England this weekend. Well, one of the questions that, that's always posed is, well, do you guys, what do you travel with? We travel with about 22,000 pounds worth of equipment, it's the equivalent of 21 trunks. And whatever you see the guys have out in the field, somewhere in a trunk, we have a backup. We travel with uniforms, we travel with pants, belts, toiletries, face masks, helmets, you name it. Somewhere in a trunk, we have it. This is all our heavyweight parkas, heavyweight uh, waist length jackets, so on and so forth. Fortunately, I live in Miami and we don't need to use this stuff very often because Lord knows that I hate the cold. But when, when we got to use it, it's here and we're ready to go. Obviously, a, a road game is much more difficult for us than a, than a game at home. At home, we're able to, to stock the stadium and our, you know, and our cabinets at the stadium with a lot of the same supplies we have here. So it's, it's not that, that, that difficult for us to go to a, you know, to move the stuff for a home game. We go to a road game, it's, it, it gets tedious. You're, you're talking about 22,000 pounds worth of stuff, you know, 80 guys that we're taking, especially during the preseason, 15 coaches, another 20 staff members that we worry about. So we, we really can't afford to forget much. We take just about everything. We don't leave much to chance. Well, I don't know if Tony's underpaid or not, but he sure does a lot of work back there. It seems to me like he's <laughs> crying a lot about his job. He does a lot of work, so I'm sure you guys appreciate everything. I have to everything. give him a hard time. I'm sure you guys appreciate everything he does. Dan, let's take a look at the news from the front office, and we'll go inside of that, brought to us by Office Depot. Jeff Cross is practicing this week. He's back, and hopefully that'll bring some fresh legs to that defensive front. Also, quarterback Spence Fisher was replaced by Jerry Wilson on the practice roster. He's a defensive back, gives you some added depth at that position. But the big thing is Jeff Cross is back and practicing. You always need fresh legs on that defensive front. Well, Jeff, is, as you know, has been out the whole season, and everybody's kind of uh, excited that he's coming back. But who knows? You know, with a back injury and uh, the way that you know, all the medical people are talking, he might not be back as soon as people want him to be. But, uh, you know, Jeff has always been a big contributor to this team, and I'm hoping he's coming back soon. Well, let's hope he's back real soon. And coming up next on the Dan Marino Show, Dan's guest will join us. He's Randall Hill, big part of the receiving core of this Miami Dolphin team. Faced the Seattle Seahawks a couple of weeks ago. Craig Erickson in for the injured Dan Marino. Who does he look for? Number 89, Randall Drill Hill into the end zone for a touchdown and a big Miami score. Welcome back to the Miami Dolphin Training Facility in Davie, Florida. I'm John Congemi, along with Dan Marino. And Dan, your special guest tonight, Randall Hill. Hey, Randall, thanks for being on the show. What's up? Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. hey uh, listen, you know, this week uh, was a tough week. But uh, after the Dallas game, what is the attitude of the team? Well, you know, I think the team uh, wants to come back and bounce back uh, from a loss and, and try to, I guess, put the Dallas game behind us and go, and go forward and play New England. Um, the game plan coming off last week, this week, I know Jimmy talked about this, getting back to basics. Uh, you know, Coach Larry Seibel, receivers this week. Tell us about what our offensive scheme is going to be. Well, I don't, you know, I'm very political in, in most of the things that I say, but, uh, you know, I th think we're going to get back to the run, and uh, we're going to run the ball. We're going to throw the ball effectively. And, uh, and, you know, like you said to me earlier, you're going to throw the ball to me a lot. 
<laughs> that's, that's, that's what we're trying to cover. And, uh, you know, you, you've been really producing well, so we gotta, we got to do that. Man. That's always a promise from <laughs> yes. a quarterback. Yes. That's right. Randall, I know with your speed, you would like to challenge defenses vertically, and I know Dan entrusts you in getting deep and getting vertical to try to stretch the defensive secondary for him. Right. I mean, uh, you want to use your speed, and you want to do anything possible uh, to, to help the team, whether it be uh, just running decoy routes, uh, stretching the defense, or, uh, or just going out and, and catching the ball deep. Right, a perfect example is coming up against Buffalo. I know you caught a 61-yard pass against them, which was a big play in that in that ball game from Craig Erickson. Right, I, I, usually a quarterback's uh, I like like the yak or the rat, <laughs> or the yards after the catch, That's the run right. after the catch. So you know you can catch a, a five-yard uh, a ball and, and, and take it. Dan, I know. That, that, that's what I'm looking for, Randall. <laughs> right. We're going to need a lot of that this week. You see right here, Randall makes just a, a, a great catch. Uh, and and he, he has this ability to get by the safeties and make, make plays down the field. And uh, that's what we're looking for this week. Randall, I know with a quarterback like Dan Marino, he then only needs a small window to fit the football in there. And you always have to be on your toes. Even if you think you're covered just a touch, Dan can fit it in, so you always have to be alert for the football. Exactly. I, most quarterbacks, uh, yeah, I'm going to pull Jan, uh, Dan's chain a little bit here. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, most quarterbacks can't do that. They don't have that ability to, to, to put the ball uh, exactly where only the, the receivers can get in and not the defensive back. So, you know, Dan's going to do that. Well, what a lot of people don't know out there is uh, preparing during the week, Randall has to prepare for a couple different positions because sometimes you have to play flank. Right, exactly. Play split. So why don't you let the people uh, know out there what you prepare for during the week? Well, uh, most of the time, uh, I, I play uh, X or, or split in. And, uh, you know, sometimes I can come in, I can play Z. And I have to know both uh, positions, uh, especially when we go four wide or four wide receivers. So uh, Dan knows exactly where I am. And, uh, you know, and we had that timing down. Um, going into New England, I know Coach Johnson talked about how, you know, we, we're four and four, but this is the second half of the season. We've got to concentrate on, you know, winning our division. And we're in pretty good shape in our division. Right. I mean, we're still in, in pretty good shape. We haven't really lost. Uh, divisional games, and uh, we're, we're going to put uh, this thing together, and we're going to make sure that the fans uh, have a, a winner here. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to continue to work hard and take care of the second half of the season. Randall, thanks for being on the show, and uh, yeah, we got a watch. Uh, we have a watch for you. Hot sure watch waiting for <laughs> from Oh Lewis yeah, oh yeah. And Randall, I think I'm going to come back and maybe be the guest next <laughs> week because that watch is a really fine watch. And Levinson's, we'd like to thank you for providing that watch for us. And next up on the Dan Marino Show, right here on Sports Channel. Dan's tip of the week. Do you think you can pick it up and fling it? There's an art to gripping the football. Dan will talk about that next, right here on Sports Channel. Marino's tips are brought to you by Logo Athletic. Get real. Welcome back to the show. Our tip of the week this week is gripping the football. Now, the grip the football, I think it's most important thing is comfort. And I'm going to show you my grip. What I like to do is put my hand a little bit further over the top of the ball. As you see, my knuckles are almost right on the strings. And the most important thing also with having a comfortable grip is having air right here. You see this little space in between the ball and the palm of your hand. It's extremely important. What you don't want to do is have your palm directly on the ball. It makes it very difficult to throw that way. So I'll show you my grip, as you see, and having the air between the palm and the ball. You have to have comfort in your grip. And after you get this and you get the grip right, and for you as a kid, having comfort with your grip, then it comes down to the throwing motion and the technique of throwing a football. So our tip of the week this week is gripping a football. Welcome back to the Dan Marino Show, and I'm John Congemi with Dan Marino. Dan, I think that's a very not valuable a, tip. Not a bad for, tip. For young quarterbacks, you know, sometimes you just grip the football differently you know, when you're a young kid and then you develop another grip. But I think, have you had that grip all your life? Well, really, when, when I was a young kid and, and any quarterback or any young kid, they should just, just try to be comfortable with their grip. But use the basics, and I think we showed the basics of a good fundamental grip in throwing the football there. And uh, after that, everybody has their own style. And as you get bigger and you get older, you want to develop your own style as a young quarterback. And uh, that's basically what I did. Mm -hmm. It's time now for our mailbag question of the week. You can participate via the internet by dialing www.sportschannel.com, and if we use your question, you'll receive an official Topps Dan Marino card, courtesy of CyberCard. This week's question comes from Robert Smoot of Columbus, Ohio, and his question is, Dan, why are the coaches not letting you utilize the hurry-up offense in the course of a game? Well, John, uh, you know, it's difficult to, to use the hurry-up offense, and especially, you know, in games when you want to control the football, control the line of scrimmage. And Robert, if 
to answer the, the question honestly, we can do it if we want to do it. We're very capable of doing it. Uh, you know, Buffalo's done it for years. The Miami Dolphins can do it. We've done it in games in the past when we had to come from behind. But we've always emphasized the running game and trying to control the line of scrimmage and keeping our defense off the field at times. And it's tough to do when you have a hurry-up offense. You want to try to eat the clock up like Dallas did against us last week when they had 42 minutes uh, possession right. time. And that's what we're looking for so we don't use the hurry-up offense. I think fans get caught up in the, in the idea of when you do it at the end of the game, you're so successful throwing the football. But there is a time and a place for everything. Sure. Dan, do you know anything about the Super Bowl of fashion? You should. Uh, the way you look tonight, you should know well, something about thanks, it. Thanks, but I don't. But I'm sure you're going to tell us. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> the Miami Dolphins, in conjunction with the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, will host the 8th Annual Miami Dolphins Super Bowl of Fashion on Friday, November 8th. The formal evening, which is highlighted by a fashion show with over 20 Dolphin players and their wives, will take place at the Sheridan Bell Harbor. The proceeds from the benefit will go to our local chapter of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. The night's activities include a cocktail hour and a silent auction, followed by dinner and dancing. There will also be a live auction featuring two tickets to the Super Bowl in New Orleans. The cocktail hour begins at 7.30, followed by a dinner at 8.30 and a fashion show at 10. If you're interested in going, tickets are, for the event are $150 per person. For more ticket information, contact the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation at 305-947-4243 in Dade, 954-739-5006 in Broward, and in Palm Beach, it's 407-426-3918. Coming up next on the Dan Marino Show, we'll take a look ahead at the New England Patriots. Dan, you've had a, a very consistent and great victory stretch over the New England Patriots. Let's hope we can continue, continue it this Sunday. It's improved considerably uh, since we played them the first game of the year. Uh, they have um, won five out of their last six. Uh, and I think uh, one of the reasons for the improvement is uh, Terry Glenn at wide receiver. He's their leading receiver. He's a very exciting receiver. Uh, he's added a lot to the passing game. Uh, on top of that, they're running the football a lot better with uh, Curtis Martin, who's having an outstanding year again. Welcome back to the Dan Marino Show. I'm John Congemi, along with Dan Marino. And Dan, Nissan provides us with keys to the game versus New England this Sunday in Foxborough, Massachusetts. I believe the keys to the game, Danny, first you have to pressure Bledsoe. The defensive line really needs to step it up. And I believe it'll help the running game, or the passing game, if we start running the football, just a jump start on the running game, and plus on defense, limit the big plays. Well, that's very true. And, la and you see, last, uh, the last time we played New England at home, we pressured Bledsoe. We had some turnovers on him. You have to stop their running game also. <clears throat> and, in a, and in playing up in New England, you have the crowd and all that. That's a big part for them. But we've had a lot of success against them. If we play our game, we don't turn it over, we should be able to beat them. You're right. You've had a lot of success against the New England Patriots. 13 out of the last 15 meetings have been successful ones for the Miami Dolphins. You can see there the series right at the bottom. 13 of the last 15 games, and you've rushed the ball for over 100 yards in your first meeting. Well, that's very true. And, uh, uh, and, and we talked today, or this whole week, and, and today in meetings about how we got to run the football against the Patriots. You're right. In the first week of this season, the Miami Dolphins were very successful in running the football. They dominated the New England Patriots. Let's see if we can repeat that this Sunday. The Dolphins started out red hot first quarter. Louis Oliver intercepted Drew Bledsoe. Louis Oliver returns it 60 yards. But look out, Louis. Somebody's behind you. Oliver fumbles the ball, and it's recovered by Sean Hill. He scoops it up. Sean Hill takes it to the end zone for a Dolphin touchdown. After a Joe Nedney field goal made it 10-0, the Zach attack gets to Bledsoe for a loss of six yards. New England managed the field goal out of that drive, but J.B. Brown forced a fumble on Sean Jefferson, separated him from the ball and his senses. Louis Oliver was there for the recovery. After the Patriots intercepted Marino, Steve Edmond got involved. Edmond gets the ball back from Jefferson again as he puts it on the ground. Tim Bowens is there to recover the loose ball for the Dolphins. That led to a three-yard touchdown run by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The Dolphins led 17-3. Second half, Dan Marino came out hot. Marino fires from the end zone. He hooks up with Stanley Pritchett for a 52-yard reception. Three plays later, Marino finds Jarris McPhail over the middle for a pickup of 21 yards. Then to Pritchett again. The ball pops out on the goal line. 
but Scott Miller is right there to recover it into the end zone. Touchdown, 24-3 Dolphins. The Patriots put a touchdown on the board on this fourth and one play as mighty Ben Coates catches the ball and dives into the end zone for the touchdown. The Dolphin defense responded. Danny Stubbs with the pressure. The Dolphins sack Drew Bledsoe. Danny Stubbs and the Dolphins defensive line dominated most of the day. But the key player for the Dolphins on this afternoon was rookie Zach Thomas with the hit of the year on Sean Jefferson. Knocked the ball out and knocked him out. And Terrell Buckley puts the final nail in the coffin, intercepting Bledsoe in the end zone. The Dolphins beat the Patriots on opening day, 24 to 10. Thank you, Joe Zagaki, for providing the New England Patriot package for us. And Danny, the Miami Dolphins, right now, you guys are in, I think, great shape. You're only one game back in the AFC East, and you're three and one in the, in the division. Oh, that's very true. And uh, Coach Johnson talked about that, the fact that we are four and four, but we've already beat the Buffalo Bills. We've already uh, beat the New England Patriots and uh, we get Indianapolis at home and we also play the Jets again. So within our division, we're not in bad shape. Dan, it's been a pleasure, okay, buddy. John, thanks. thanks a yeah. lot. Okay. Look forward to a victory coming back from New England. All right. Coming up this week on Sports Channel, you have a big Saturday night in store for you. Starting at 6 p.m., the Panthers Weekly with Coach Doug McLean. Jeff Rimmer, Saturday night at 6 p.m., then at 7, it's Florida Panther Hockey. Join Ned Smith as he takes a look at upcoming game versus Philadelphia. Then at 7.30, Jeff Rimmer and Denny Potvin make the call of the Panthers action right here on Sports Channel. And finally, it's... Dan Marino and the Dolphins came out strong in the first half against the Patriots as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar rushed for two touchdowns, but also a questionable fumble. It was frustrating for me um, because, you know, I guess after the fumble, as a running back, you get a little tense, and uh, you don't run as freely, you know. And for a couple of series, I didn't run as freely, you know, even, even when we did continue to run. And the defense was forcing turnovers as well. Two interceptions, two fumble recoveries. We have disappointments all the time. And that's why they call us professionals. We have to uh, somehow, some way, get it, show up next week, and we're going to do it. But Curtis Martin, with three touchdowns, and a pair of touchdowns by Big Ben Coates led to the New England Patriots' victory. I feel like, you know, we're a team that should be competing and should, you know, win these games. And, uh, uh, you know, opportunities we had, we should have been a different ball game, but uh, we just let it slip away. And it is frustrating because now we're in a deep hole. We'll talk more with Dan Marino next here on Sports Channel. From the Miami Dolphins training camp in Davie, Florida, Sports Channel is proud to present the Dan Marino Show. Welcome to the show. I'm Ned Smith along with Dan Marino. And hey, uh, maybe you said it best that you guys have built yourself into a little hole here with three losses in a row. Well, it's disappointing in the fact we go to New England thinking that uh, we got a chance to make some headway within our division playing at New England and already beating them once at home. And, and uh, while we played a good football game, it's just we can't find a way to finish them, you know, to finish off games. And, and we had so many opportunities, and we just didn't take advantage of it. So that's, that's kind of really what was so disappointing. What's the attitude been like this week at practice, uh, knowing that you guys have a winnable game coming up against Indianapolis? Well, the attitude has been good. It's, it was good the week before and the week before against Dallas. And, it's, and we're a team that has actually practiced well and I think has started off games and played really well. And, the key word what I've been talking about is we're not finishing games. We're not making enough plays in the second half in order to take advantage of our opportunities and, and put ourselves in a position to win. And that's, that's what we need to build on somehow. All right, let's look inside the numbers. Mobile has that for us. We'll begin with the team stats. Dan, why don't you take a look at those? Well, obviously, uh, you know, the penalties is a big thing. 14 penalties, 105 yards. I think that really hurt our team overall. Uh, other than that, our stats are pretty good. We had time of possession. We had a lot of rushing yards. We had passing yards. 
Uh, what we didn't do was, was take advantage of some of the turnovers that we had. And you see Kareem had a big day, 29 rushes, 104 yards. Although his average isn't that high, but he was just pounding away at it. I had a pretty average day, actually, and uh, made a couple mistakes and a couple bad throws, which I wish I had an opportunity to do again. But, uh, you know, that's going to happen. And then OJ is another, he's our go-to guy, has a big play at the end of the game. But never really got anything going in the second half, Ned. Defensively, of course, uh, you, you always look at uh, the stats there, and the guy jumped right out always is Zach Thomas. He'll be our guest a little bit later on, but let's take a look at the defensive stats as we continue on, and there he is well, up on top. Always, we talk about Zach every week. Uh, what else can you say? Zach's play, having a really good year, and uh, you know, defensively, Sean Wooden was playing good, had a, had a turnover interception, big interception that, that could have helped us, but it didn't at the time because we didn't take advantage of it. And see a sack by Danny Stubbs was consistently playing well. All right, uh, head coach uh, Jimmy Johnson had a chance to look at back at that game on Monday night, and he had this to say about uh, particularly the end of the game. When you look at the, uh, the last eight minutes, they got a third of their yardage and 21 points. Uh, up until that time, uh, I thought defense uh, had responded and played better. And, that's, and, and as I talked to the defense after the team meeting, I said, hey, you know, I know it sounds crazy uh, with the points that uh, you look at on the final result. Uh, but I was pleased with some individual play uh, on defense, and, and I liked the way we played up to the point uh, of eight minutes in the, into the ball game. That was the big key, the, the end of the game. Not, up until then, you guys are right there. Well, you, you look at even after Kareem's fumble, and uh, you know I threw an interception earlier, uh, we still had like three or four opportunities when we were only down by four points of good field position, and defense was giving the, us those opportunities. And, and uh, we just uh, did not find a way offensively to put some points up there to take some of the momentum away from New England. It just didn't happen. But uh, defensively, they played more than uh, well enough for us to win. All right, Coca-Cola has what's on the menu for today's Dan Marino show. Of course, we'll uh, look back a little bit more of the game, but look ahead to the Dolphins' video department. We'll talk with our guest, Zach Thomas, the rookie linebacker. Danny's tip of the week, taking snaps from center, and we'll preview the upcoming game against the Colts. Coming up on Sports Channel's Dan Marino show, Dave Hack, part of the Dolphins video brother team. We'll tell you more about that later on. Dan Marino Show, brought to you in part by Heineken, true to the original recipe since 1886. Welcome back to the Miami Dolphins training camp in Davie, Florida. It's the Dan Marino Show here on Sports Channel. And the awards continue to mount up for Dan Marino this week with just 10 more completions. He'll go over 4,000 yards, and then with 83 yards, the first quarterback to throw for over 50,000 yards for yourself. Well, uh, it's, it's nice, and uh, you know when it happens, uh, but to be the first guy to ever do that, it's, it is something special, and I always cherish it. But uh, to me, the most important thing is trying to win games and being in that kind of situation in that environment. And uh, although I'll be proud of it, the most important thing this Sunday is going to be winning that football game. Gosh, that's got to be just incredible, the fact that you've thrown for that many yards, but you look back over your career, you've had some great receivers, and again, winning is the key important. I know you'd like those 83 yards to come on a, a perhaps a winning touchdown. I'd like to be in a one play. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good, too. But, you know, a guy who has chronicled most of those passes for Dan, not only at practice, but also throughout his career, is Dave Hack. He and his brother Bob have a chance to look at Dan every day, even at practice. High above Dolphins training camp, rain or shine in a movable elevated tower is a pair of brothers shooting every play going on down the field. Behind the cameras are Dave Hack and his brother Bob training their lenses on the players going through drills for coaches to view later. During a game, Dave shoots the sideline view from high atop the press box in the stadium, while Bob shoots the end zone angle. Dolphins head coach Jimmy Johnson and his staff of coaches use the video to analyze various aspects of the game using views you don't normally see on the television. The shot we do for the coaches is completely unique compared to what you see on television. Uh, the shot you see on television is primarily a beauty shot, uh, a sales shot. Uh, doesn't really get into the in-depth part of the game. Uh, for instance, our sideline shot shows the uh, is a wide show all 22 guys shot. Uh, that's really important, especially for the passing game people, because you get to see the interaction between the wide receivers and the defensive backs. Uh, you see that occasionally on television, like John Madden will do as Telestrator and get his little pen out and do some writing, and uh, that shows how the game unfolds. Uh, the TV really doesn't show that in its particular coverage. Different groups use different shots. We shoot two shots at a game, 
and one of them is a sideline wide shot. The second is an end zone tight shot. Uh, the passing game people, and uh, uh, especially Dan and his receivers, are really interested in the wide shot. And uh, we shoot an end zone like tight end to tight end shot, and that's very important for the interior line guys and the interaction between the linebackers and the line. A typical practice for us is we wheel out our giant yellow, I call it the Zamboni, for all you Panther fans, and we uh, place it strategically on the field and uh, allow the, the coaches a bird's eye view of practice. And this is very important because they reinforce what they do on the field immediately in the meeting rooms because right after they come off the field, they're watching tape. Of course, I said he chronicled every one of Dan's touchdowns. In fact, he's the only guy to see you throw every touchdown. Yeah, and, and me too. Including me. Well, well yeah, other than but, you, I, yeah. But uh, these guys are so important to the team and everything, all the preparation, uh, everything we do during the week, uh, you know, to be able to sit down and watch the film. They do all the cut-ups, break-ups. Like, for example, uh, you know, when we played New England last week, it'd be different passing reels, down and distance reels, and they, they organize all that in order for us to prepare and watch films during the week. And I know you spend extra time after practice looking at those, but let's look first now at the numbers from the front office, and they're brought to you by Office Depot. Right off the bat, Dolphins wave center Cal Dixon and signed cornerback Jerry Wilson to the active roster. He was just put on the practice squad last week. Dolphins also signed running back Brandon Bennett to the practice squad. We've got more of Sports Channel's Dan Marino show coming up. We'll talk with our guests, the rookie linebacker. Zach Thomas joins us in just a few moments. Number 54, the rookie linebacker, Zach Thomas, an interception against the Bills. Hope the Dolphins win that game. He's had a lot of big plays this year. Here's another one coming right over the offensive lineman for a sack of Jim Kelly. Welcome back to the Dan Marino Show. We're from the Miami Dolphins training camp in Davie, Florida. I'm Ned Smith, along with Dan Marino, and our guest this week is the rookie linebacker, Zach Thomas. Hey, Zach. Thanks hey, for coming. Dan. No All problem. Right. Richard, listen, being a rookie, you've made this transition it's been remarkable tell us how you've done that well you know it's a lot of study in the film but you know it's been tough um, you know I'm still learning and, you know once I get to where I'm you're reacting again you know I'm still thinking too much and it, you know it's a complicated system so you know I'm, once I get it down I think uh, you know I'd it'd be even better well you've kind of you know had to fill in some big shoes you know Brian Cox uh, was here the middle linebacker last time and uh, uh, also being a rookie, has is it, is it been tough, you know, adjusting with a lot, a lot of veteran guys around? I mean, has there been any pranks? Or what's the toughest thing about being a rookie so far and beating the starting, uh, being the starting middle linebacker? Well, you know, it's tough. You know, I can't, you know, lead. I only lead by example because, you know, I can't go out there and tell everybody what to do. They've been here so many years. And so, you know, I try to lead by my play. But, you know, in a couple of years, I start getting a little more vocal and stuff like that. But, you know, they, they have really treated me real well. I had not too many pranks on me. No, no pranks for a rookie. Well, that's how about Danny. You better take note of that a little bit. How about bit. donuts or anything? You had to get breakfast or donuts? Oh yeah, I've had to bring breakfast uh, two or three times. And okay. So you know. I knew there had to be something. There you go. Yeah. Let's take a look at some video of Zach during some games, and maybe Zach, you'll help us talk about this a little bit. Uh, here we are. We're coming up with a, uh, a big sack against Drew Bledsoe the first time you, you face him. Oh yeah, we you know we played real aggressive that game, and uh, you know we came after him. So versus uh, they hit everybody. I'll remember. What does that feel like? <laughs> you get a good hit it like that. It feels pretty good, you know. I mean, a hit out. like that, you know, he didn't see me coming, so it felt real good. Here you get a forced fumble and recovered against the Cardinals. Oh, yeah. I, I, I didn't even think I got that out. I think someone else did. Gene Atkins told me he got that out. Oh, really? So. Well, he's not here, so you me, get so. credit for it. All right. Here you get a the big stop <laughs> on the Jets coming up here after uh, you show off that football a little bit. Here, nice stop in the running game. Yeah, I was on a blitz, a Mike blitz up the middle on this one. Then you're going to recover a fumble uh, caused by Calvin Jackson here against Seattle. Oh, yeah, trying to bring back my running back days. Uh, didn't do too much yeah, with you it. Yeah, you didn't do much there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Dan's hey, a hard critic hey. here. <laughs> so what's been, what's been your biggest surprise so far uh, in your first NFL season? Well, I don't think that you know how long it is. I mean, you know, you got to be consistent week to week, and it's hard to get up every game. It's not like college. And, you know, another thing, everything is so much faster. And, uh, you know, quarterbacks don't give up the ball as much. Yeah, what's the uh, what's the uh, team's attitude been? I mean, it was such an important game up in New England, but uh, you know, last year there was a point where we were six and six and feeling pretty bad about you know our season, but uh, we won our last three and ended up getting in the playoffs. So, although you know there's a negative feeling around, we still got to be positive because we got a long way to go. Oh yeah, you know we're trying to stay positive. I think today you know we threw all that behind because uh, you know we don't want to lose the next game and then just go downhill. We're in a hole right now, but we need to dig out and 
you know, I think that, uh, you know, we can do that. And congratulations, the NFL Rookie of the Month, Zach Thomas. I know coming in as a fifth-round selection of the Dolphins, you're playing like as well as a first-round selection. And do you, do you get pumped up more because teams passed you up and you fell to the fifth round? Oh, yeah. You know, I was, you know, I was uh, you know, at first I was a little frustrated with it, but I just wanted the chance. And, uh, you know, coming out, you know, I was really frustrated seeing all the linebackers that went before me. And so, you know, it, it was frustrating. But, you know, I wanted to prove everybody wrong. And I think so far I have. And, uh, you know, I've still got seven games left. Well, Zach, thanks for being a guest on show. Heard your right. watch. Thanks, Dan. And uh, appreciate you coming down. And, All right. Uh, and I uh, want to thank Robin and Mark Levinson for the watch. Levinson Jewelers, yeah. a nice Movado watch. I'd like to thank them. And uh, thanks, Zach appreciate Thomas. It, right? Congratulations. All right. Stay healthy. A lot more to come here on Sports Channel's Dan Marino Show coming up next. How to take the snap from center. Dan's tip of the week coming up next. Dan Marino. are brought to you by Logo Athletic. Get real. Welcome back to the show. This week's tip is taking a snap from center. There's a few critical things you have to know. First of all is your hand position and your foot, your feet position so you're in balance and you're able to get away from the center quickly. First of all, let's talk about hand position. You want to put your hand underneath the center and be firm. And also, what I like to do is put my thumb, interlock my thumb together with my other hand so my hands won't come apart. So you want to put your hands under there, and also you want to have your arm bent a little bit so you could ride the center when you're moving away from the line of scrimmage. I'm going to demonstrate a snap here. Also, you see that my feet are wide apart, and they're in a balanced position from my shoulder so I can get away from the center as quickly as possible. So we're going to take a snap here right now. Say it, hut. The other situation would be a shotgun snap. Okay, Charlie. Um, First of all, you want to be four or five yards behind the center. And you notice this is one of my favorite positions to be is in the shotgun when you want to throw the football. You have to have vision down the field, and it gets you in a better position to be in the pocket. Uh, you want to be able to be in a position where you can catch the ball and get back to 10 yards so you can see down the field. Let's demonstrate one. Sit, hut. So you want to be back far enough so you can see, read the coverages, read the defenses, and deliver the football. Welcome back to the Dan Marino Show from the Miami Dolphins training camp in Davie, Florida. I'm Ned Smith along with Dan Marino. Another good tip on how to right, set yeah. yourself up to be able to see downfield from that well, shotgun that position. Well, important, taking a snap. I mean, that's where, where it all starts. So. Yeah, that's right. You can't uh, fumble the ball right there. But let's uh, jump right now. Time for our mailbag question of the week. And again, you can be one of those guys to ask Dan a question. All you have to do is get on your computer, dial up sportschannel.com, look for Touch Florida, then look for the Dan Marino Show. If we use your question, you'll receive an official Topps Dan Marino card courtesy of CyberCard. This week's com question comes from Wayne Kaczynski of Orchard Park, New York. Jim Harbaugh seems to have had a rebirth in Indianapolis. How much does the coaching style of different coaches affect the play of players? It seems that Ditka, although a good coach, really prevented Harbaugh from being as good as he could be. Well, it's very true, and it's a good question. I think uh, Jim uh, really has flourished in the Indianapolis system because of their system. It's, it's not as demanding uh, where he has to throw the ball down the field and make all the plays. Uh, and also, he's really uh, gotten good at moving around in the pocket and not making the big mistakes, throwing interceptions in critical situations. And Lenny Infante's offense in Indianapolis is one that it's like sort of a running game. It's an underneath-type offense where you can – Pick your spots and throw, and I think when he was with Ditka, they were trying to throw the ball down the field a little more, and, and uh, it seems that some 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 players can do better in different systems, and it's a good question. You're absolutely right. Jim is doing a lot better in the Indianapolis system than he did in the Chicago Bears system. All right. I know the game is Sunday, but Friday night, a lot of the players are going to be involved for a very good cause. It's the Super Bowl of fashion, benefiting cystic fibrosis. It's at the Sheridan Bal Harbor. It's for Dolphins players and wives, and again, couldn't ask for a nicer cause. Oh, it's very true. A lot of the guys, I haven't had a chance to go yet, and this, uh, you can't go this year either, Ned, but uh, I know a lot of guys go, and it's, it's something that, that they raise a lot of money, and it's, it's an interesting night. All right, coming up on Sports Channel's Dan Marino Show, we'll look ahead to this week's opponent. It's the Indianapolis Colts. That's coming back. Nice. Jim Harbaugh uh, makes plays, uh, I think. It was not characteristic of his play yesterday when he has the four interceptions in the first quarter and a half. Um, and so we know that they're going to be a desperate team coming down here facing, facing another desperate team. Um, and 
we both feel like that we can make the playoffs. And uh, so that's what makes this a big game. Welcome back to the Dan Marino Show from the Miami Dolphins training camp at Davie, Florida. I'm Mitch Smith along with Dan Marino. And that's the key. You guys still feel you can make the playoffs. Well, it's very true. And I mentioned it earlier in the show. Last year, uh, we were 6-6 six and six at one point with three games left. We won our last three games, made the playoffs. Although it was a wild card, we had to go on the road. Uh, you know, anything's possible. And uh, we have a lot of games left. Hey, we can win seven in a row and be in really good shape. But um, you have to take one at a time. I know it's a cliche, but that's how you have to do it. And this week, it happens to be the Colts. It's a very good football team. And we haven't had a lot of success against them lately. Uh, they played us you know, really tough up in Indianapolis, although we were in the game, could have won it at the end. We didn't. Um, last couple of years, uh, you know, they played us tough. But um, for us, we just got to, in our home building, you know, not have turnovers, play good, solid football, and finish the game. You know, play, build on the first half. You know, that's what we've been doing. We've been playing good football in the first half and not so good in the second half. So we need to play better second half football. All right. I think that says so much of the keys to the game brought to you by Nissan. And again, it is harass Harbaugh, find the running game, and restart that winning attitude. So important this week against the Colts. And again, this is the very same game that Dan got injured in the last time they faced each other. The Dolphins lead the series. Very importantly, 36 to 18. Let's look back at the last meeting between the Dolphins and, of course, the Indianapolis Colts. He's rushed for 1.5 miles. That equates to 2,625 yards. He scored 26 times. This year he has four touchdowns. This one against the Buffalo Bills. Marvin Harrison is a rookie out of Syracuse and is second on the team with 30 catches for 350 yards and two touchdowns. One of Jim Harbaugh's favorite targets is tight end Ken Dilger. In his second season, he has 26 catches for 383 yards. Aaron Bailey is in his third year, a product of Louisville. He has 10 receptions for 169 yards. Against the Dolphins, he never saw the ball. The veteran Richard, please don't dent, Dan, is in his 14th season in the NFL. He has over 125 career sacks, putting him in the top five. And Tony Bennett is a seven-year vet with 55 sacks in 88 games. Another dangerous threat to the Miami passing game. Again, I think that was a game that the Dolphins win had you not gotten injured. Well, I hope so. I hope it would have been like that. You know, you, you saw all the sacks and, the, and the, a lot of the, all the plays that they're making. And Jim Harbaugh is a, is, a, is a great quarterback now. He's playing really well. And they're playing good defensively. And I would hope to think that if I did play in a game, we'd have won and we'd have been in a better situation right now. But, uh, you know, our backs are against the wall. We're going to have to continue to play hard, play well. But we're not out of it yet. We've got to be positive and just continue to work. All right. A lot more to come on Sports Channel. Stay tuned for all the things next Thursday right here on Sports Channel. It's the Dan Marino Show. See you then. In part by... So take a shot just as he was throwing the ball. Zach Thomas. It's a blitz. Tim Jacobs, the secondary guy, comes from the outside, occupies the blocker. Zach Thomas sees an opening, and this man can run and make a decision and get to a player when he wants to. Sean Jefferson can attest to that after <laughs> yes. the hit he took down in Miami in game one. Tupa to kick it with O.J. McDuffie back at the 22. Has some room on the sidelines. Run out at the 35. 52 yard punt, 19 on the return. Timeout. It's tied at seven. <laughs> oh, there, Bill. Oh, you okay. know what? Oh. If Bill Parcells was, has three daughters. You're the son that he didn't have. Boy, does he well, He really cares about it. We you. were out at practice Friday. It was very cold. And, of course, I wasn't dressed for it. Uh, and we're freezing. He looks over at me. And I'm standing there. And he goes, oh, my gosh. He goes, you are soft. He says, you're softer than Carville ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh. tied seven all out of the Sims' birthday. So at least we know how old he is. All the media guides were confused. He took so many years off while he was playing. Back to the outside. 
Did you ever do that, Paul, in your day? You know, whenever you, you, know, you come back after a season, just tell the media guy, just take, don't add that year this year. Just make me a little younger. Just take one off. Take a couple off. Hey, let me tell you something. If you've seen this face in his body, you can't hide your age. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Hey, pretty good names. Nagurski, Feller, Rojakas, yeah. Holmes, Roseanne, and Sims. Celebrate the uh, birthday today along with our partner. Second down and four. But I always look young next to Paul McGuire. That's important. Keep him in the booth. That's Keep right. him in here. Abdul Jabbar squeezing through a small hole. Theosaga Pulatelli make the tackle and uh, down to Jim Gray. All right, Dick, the news is not good for Jarris McPhail of the Dolphins. He has a potentially fractured left wrist, according to Kevin O'Neill, the trainer for the Dolphins, and he will not return today. He's being x-rayed right now. And one of the uh, legion of rookies on this Jimmy Johnson team, McPhail, lost apparently for the rest of the day. First down, Miami just across the 50. Early in the second quarter. Of course, is Abdul Jabbar he gets a couple. Dick, 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 let's go back. Let's go back to the first quarter, the first possession of the Miami Dolphins. Marino throwing the ball down the field. Is open this thing up. They're they're running. They're, they're attempting to run the football. Now they picked up the last first down running the ball, and they seem to be doing a pretty good job at it. But also they're going into the wind now, so they were trying to take advantage. I think in the first quarter, having the wind in your back, try to get some big plays. They've rushed as a team for 34 yards on 12 tries, a little better than their average the last five games. Blitz picked up, good throw, and a first down to Charles Jordan, only his fifth catch all year, the former Raider and former Packer, and what a throw by Marino. The perfect pass again. He throws this ball before J Jordan makes the move, and Marino knows it. When Jordan is making this move, the ball is now in the air. Watch this. As he turns, here's the ball now. I mean, that's the perfect throw. It is, and you saw Dan Marino smiling after the play was over because the blitzers are coming free. He has to step back there on his back foot, throw it sidearm, and he throws a perfect pass. Another first down, Dolphins at the 39. Six a flag down in the backfield. Right where uh, Stanley Pritchett had thrown it. One of the things that. Uh, Holding number 86 to the offense. 10 yards. First down. Brett Carroll is. is Chris Slade, number 53, at the end of the line of scrimmage. You, see, you can see him pulling up. Former team yesterday, Marino's the most confident player that I have ever seen by far. He said, no defense for a perfect pass, and I can throw a perfect pass is the way Marino operates. Right there, the pitch up to the 40-yard line to get back uh, about the 10 they lost on the penalty. Confidence, uh, cockiness, all qualities you'd want in your quarterback? The greatest quality you could ever give a quarterback is to have the confidence and, and, of, of a Dan Marino. And I've always said, and I mean this as a compliment, he's never thrown an incompletion or an interception that was his fault. <laughs> and because he just doesn't believe he can do no wrong. So when, it, so when he does make a mistake, he doesn't wear on him. He comes back out in the field still feeling good, and he can create positive plays because of that. Second down and 11. Marino steps away from trouble. And now they're trying to get it loose. No flag down. Fans want grounding. Johnson and McGinnis were all over Marino. 
But they said he was hit as he was throwing the ball. The other thing about this guy, Dan Marino, that when he, it starts with his father. Now you see the replay now, and here comes Marino. He's going to step up. He feels Slade that right there. He steps up. Now watch what he does. He pumps. Now he just throws. He knows he's going to get hit. There's nobody out there, but he throws the ball away. That's smart. But this goes all the way back to his father, though, Dick. He used to send him messages all the time. What? Confidence. You have to have confidence in yourself. Yeah, he looked at us with those blue eyes last night and said, yeah, I expect to throw a perfect pass every time. <laughs> That's why I'm being paid so well. On third and 11. Hit as he throws, incomplete. Covered by Hitchcock as Lamar Thomas. Flag is down, and Hitchcock can't believe it. Well, Lamar Thomas went to the, to the, to the official on the side and started complaining, but he didn't throw the flag. The flag came from way downfield. And they call pass interference on Hitchcock there. Or holding, either way, it's going to be holding. a first down. Number 31 of the defense, five yards, first down. So on third and 11, the five-yard hold gives Miami new Maybe. life. Well, you can see his hands on the defender, and as he breaks out, look at that right hand, had a hold of the jersey. The official standing behind him could see that right hand on the jersey. That's why he got caught. First down on the penalty mark at the 35-yard line. Hitchcock again playing at that corner for the injured Ricky Reynolds. He's in his second year out of North Carolina. He's only got 10 guys on the field, I think. And that's what Reno's upset about. Jimmy Johnson was trying to get somebody in the game. Two, four, six, eight, ten guys. That's all they have. He is so he is really upset. Because look at we only have 10 guys. We need a guy. Give me somebody. <laughs> Confident and uh, that could be contagious. That kind of <laughs> attitude. Johnson's reaction. He knew there were only 10 in the field, and OJ McDuffie didn't make it. First down at the 35. 15 more for the Dolphins before Chris Slay can drag him down along with Willie Clay. Now that was a, a perfect run. I mean, what O.J., uh, I mean, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar did on this play is he finds the hole. Excellent job up front. You can see Willie McGinnis, number 55, getting blocked to the outside. And, and Jimmy Johnson has told us so many times about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This cow will see the daylight, find the hole, just everybody stay in their blocks, and he'll pick the right place to run the football. Picked in the third round as uh, Johnson had a sensational draft. Many have documented that. Changing plays. Rolled a time and finally hits his man O.J. McDuffie on the sidelines. Ty Law, the defender at the 15. We hope you'll follow the NFL on NBC Online at NBC.com slash sports. This week we give midseason reports on the team's in-game scoring updates, digital playbooks. Plus, our weekly poll question asks, which Super Bowl winning coach deserves the most credit for his team winning the championship? It's all at NBC.com slash sports. Ten minutes left in this first half. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Second down and four for Marino. Picks up a couple where it seemed there wouldn't be much there at all. Lawyer Malloy makes the tackle. Lawyer Malloy. You know, Abdul Jabbar is one of those backs that's, even though he's a rookie, he's very patient. You know, a, a lot of backs will just take it and I'll go here and if the hole's out there, what difference make? He'll wait. He is a very patient runner. You can see he's averaged only uh, under 37 yards a game the last five. Well, he has 50 yards in this first half today, and that's what you were talking about, Paul McGuire. Have to get back to the run, Miami. That's what uh, helped them to get off to the fast start this year, 3-0. Third down, a long one. And Abdul Jabbar just threading his way, stepping on his own men and the, the Patriots down to the 10-yard line, going to be close. If it touches the line, they've got the first down. Looks like it's just nose of the ball tickling that 10-yard line. It is first down and goal. 
Abdul Jabbar out of UCLA, the 80th player picked, and as you can see, in his uh, first game against the Patriots, it was Abdul Jabbar. They had to work on that. Spelling down there in the uh, Miami uh, training room. Was Paul in charge of those spellings? Put him on a jersey. Just put him on a <laughs> First and goal. The full ten for Miami. That goes about inside the five. Bubbles picked up by the Dolphins into the one-yard line goes Lamar Thomas. Another fortuitous bounce for Miami. You know who gets a great block is Charles Jordan, number 88. He gets it to the outside. Number 88 on this play is Charles Jordan. Here comes Abdul Jabbar to the outside. Uh, Jordan's on the inside blocking. Boom, the ball is fumbled. Miami picks it up. Now, there he is on the bottom of the screen, number 88, Jordan. Look at this block. He's just running the linebacker all the way back out of the play. That's a good block. They may be rolling the ball down uh, by contact at the three. So there was no fumble ruled. And now timeout taken by Marino and Miami with 7.54 remaining in the half. And Miami threatening to take the lead. Day drawing to a close. Uh, the coldest day of the fall here in New England. Temperature will be close to uh, freezing tonight. Second and goal at the three, Miami, tied at seven. Pritchett in motion, it's Abdul Jabbar again, touchdown. The second for the rookie. And Miami takes the lead for the first time. I don't see anything wrong with the way this offensive line is blocking. And they're not going to the left side to Richmond Webb and Sims' side. They're going back the other way where Graham Brown. That's why you think they go over Richmond Webb, the biggest offensive lineman they have, and they did that in the first meeting. But this time we're seeing all the runs to the right. Again, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar just seeing the hole, and it's a big one that time. Well, he's the man who got them downfield, running the ball 41 yards. Medney adds the extra point, and Miami moves in front 14 to 7. You're watching the NFL on NBC. Seal off the inside, and James Brown kick out on the outside, and the clear lane that Abdul Jabbar has to run into. Both touchdowns they've scored today have been the exact same play, and look at that hole. Jabbar scores another easy touchdown. Kick off by Mitney, Troy Brown, and Dave Meggett. It's to Meggett's side. Stop shy of the 30-yard line. Seven minutes and 42 seconds remain before the intermission. Key plays on the 12-play, 65-yard Miami scoring drive. Charles Jordan rarely used 13-yard catch. Abdul-Jabbar with a big 15-yard run, and then Abdul-Jabbar four for the touchdown. They're keeping the ball away from the New England offense with long scoring drives, Miami. Well, that's how it goes to work. Wide open. Ticket Terry Glenn. It's Glenn to midfield at the 50. First down, a 20-yard play. Terry Glenn does an excellent job of coming across the formation. It's a play-action fake. It draws the defensive in, uh, defense up a little, creates the big hole behind, and Drew Bledsoe does a good job of finding the open receiver. You know what uh, Bledsoe said? Of all his receivers, even though Glenn's a rookie, he makes the least mistakes. Runs great patterns, very smart. First down. He heaves it long. Intercepted. Terrell Buckley has another pick to the 26. It's his sixth of the year. You, you know, we've talked about Bledsoe making such great decisions in the last few games, the last five or six games. This was really, I mean, a poorly thrown ball. He just throws this thing up for grabs. He just heaves it. Well, the, no purpose. Well, the thought was good, Paul, but what happened is the protection was not good enough for him to step up and really throw the ball and get the ball down the field fast enough. And Terrell Buckley says if you put pressure on Drew Bledsoe, he relies too much on his arm. Terrell Buckley sees the ball hanging in the air, comes across, and makes the easy interception. But well, watch the pressure on him. Watch him sit back. Makes the ball hang in the air too long. Well, Buckley with his sixth. He was tied for the league lead in interceptions. And with a 14 7 lead back to Abdul Jabbar, and he rumbles for about eight on first down. Hitchcock from the corner to make the tackle. 
In other words, the thing that really makes that play look so bad at the end of it, there were three defenders back there on Glenn. Well, it's interesting. Remember, Terrell Buckley says he takes a few chances because of his arm, and he says he didn't know whether that excites him or scares him because he can create big plays, but also every once in a while he gives the defense a chance to make a big play. Well, Bledsoe had been intercepted only twice since the opening game. Second and a short two. Protecting the ball has the first down at the 37 yard line. So Terrell Buckley, a man uh, once highly criticized by Jimmy Johnson when he was working for the Fox Television Network and now leading the league with six picks. The former Florida State star who followed Deion Sanders with the Seminoles. I really like what he said yesterday because he was very confident about it. I mean, he did get the pick, but he said yesterday, you know, I should get a couple. <laughs> it's not one. He said, I should get two. Six minutes left in the half. Marino. Pritch at the fullback, and he has about 10. Ted Johnson makes the tackle right at the sticks, the 47-yard line. There's a guy, here's a guy, Dick, that I really like is Pritchett. I mean, he doesn't carry the ball very much, but he blocks extremely well, and he's got tremendous hands. Does that sound familiar? A fullback and a Jimmy Johnson offense yes, that blocks right. really well and <laughs> makes a lot of catches. Yeah, let me think, who would that be? But Stanley Pritchett, that's why they drafted him, because he doesn't really care, uh, care about carrying it, block for the runner, and catch a pass every now and then. He's the moose of the uh, Miami team this year. Irving Spike's first carry of the game, rudely met by Todd Collins. Todd Collins and Ted Johnson. Ted Johnson, number 52, and Todd Collins, number 59, come up into the gap, and the Patriot coaches say that Ted Johnson, number 52, is their best defensive player week in and week out. Second year out of Colorado, Todd Collins played at Carson Newman. Jimmy Johnson now brings in Bernie Parmley, a veteran from Ball State. Or Abdul Jabbar, apparently, being rested. Third and three. The receiver tripped up, and it appeared he was going to break into the clear. Lamar Thomas. Incidental contact is the call. And I'm going to tell you something. This is a great non-call. Because there's just no way that Lamar Thomas, watch this, when you, when you see what happens, here comes Lamar Thomas, watch his feet, they just get tangled up. I mean, he's pushing off with his arm, and that, that was not intentional. So it's a good non-call. The punt is John Kidd. Would they make it inside the 15 for the Patriots? So Buckley's interception, not costly to it says stay away from it and then fields it so Maggot using a little gamesmanship trying to give the Miami Dolphins a look that he wasn't going to try to run it back Time out. the styling of the Acura CL luxury coupe was designed with the old rule in mind that you never get a second chance to make a first impression and here to break that rule. Maguchi, Nancy Kerrigan, Brian Boitano, Torval and Dean headline a world-class field of skating stars next Saturday here on NBC. First down, Patriots at their 22, trailing 14-7. Turning the corner and staying in. against New England because Bledsoe has not moved from the 13-yard line. He just stayed right there. I'm not going anywhere. I think we have some holding. Yep. I mean, it's amazing. Bledsoe still has not moved from the spot. Look at this. He's looking like holding. Are you kidding me? 41 on offense. 10 yards. Repeat first down. Keith Myers guilty of uh, doing too much to help out Martin. Well, maybe that run caught the Miami defense by surprise because Keith Myers, number 41, the top of your screen, they said, Miami said the defense, they run away from Keith Myers when he goes in motion. This time they ran behind him. He makes a good block, but he gets his hands outside the defender's shoulder pads. That was a very clever effort by Martin. Quick pass, complete to Glenn. 
And the former Buckeyes to the 21. Did that Ohio State team have any good receivers? Terry Glenn, when he was a sophomore, barely played. He was the backup to Chris Sanders, who plays at Houston, and Joey Galloway starring with Seattle. And then he had Eddie George. Well, in fact, Ohio State went through the years have produced some solid uh, rookies into the NFL catching the ball. Galloway with 67. You look at the bottom, Glenn, halfway through the season, he projects to having a 74 catch year. And there for Curtis Martin, slammed down a yard loss at the 20. So that brings up third down. Megat comes in from the sidelines. Let's go back to that first play when they went to, to uh, uh, when they ran the ball to Curtis Martin, and, and you got Keith Myers holding because Jimmy Johnson told us yesterday they're not going to run to his side. That's right. They've only run there twice last week, and both times one was a minus one and the other one was no gain. So they won't run to Keith Myers' side. Well, guess what? Yeah, they did. Well, they lost came. ten. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and twelve. That's going to be a full start. It was Daryl Gardner who jumped into the backfield, but it looked as if one of the Patriots lurched on that offensive line. Officials will powwow. But if Daryl Gardner moved first, it should be a penalty on the Miami defense. Now they're going to. Well, Jefferson doesn't like what he's hearing. Yes, he's. No. Just in that proposition, they got a heavy proposition here in the state of Ma Massachusetts on Tuesday. And Better snap. snap. We have a neutral have zone a neutral infraction on the defense. Neutral zone infraction. Five yards. Third down. It is Daryl Gardner. What's well, number 92, Daryl Gardner, down here at the bottom of the screen. You can see he's going to jump first. And now that makes the receiver. Uh, Terry Glenn, number 88, on the outside move, so that should be Good call. a five-yard penalty against the defense. Good call. 88! Bledsoe was so effective with his snap count, he was drawing his own teammates offside as they warmed up before the game. So third and seven. time but Ben Coates watching coming down the field against number 34 Tim Jenkins just pushing him around because he's so much bigger than Jenkins but Jenkins makes up for it comes in and strips the ball out of Coates hands well that's the one thing that Jimmy Johnson also told us they said we're not getting the ball but we're not taking turnovers we're not taking the ball away like we did at the beginning of the season this is what we have to get back to and that's what these guys are taught the guy catches the ball strip it so leading 14 to 7 Marino from the 33 Bill Jabbar. Miami, one of the best in the league in the turnover ratio, a plus nine starting today. Surprising Bengals, the leader there, and New England plus four. Green Bay is plus 15, best in the NFL. But again, Jay was telling us, we have not, you know, the last few games, we've not been taking the ball away. And now we're coming down to the two-minute warning, and Miami only has one timeout left. 14-7 Dolphins. Three-man roster, 10 are rookies, Miami, but they've lost one probably for the rest of the year. Jarris McPhail, the word up is that he fractured his left arm. Fracture left arm, Jarris McPhail, and uh, that'll probably cost him the rest of the season. So Johnson, who has McPhail, Abdul-Jabbar, and Pritchett, three young running backs, now will uh, count on Abdul-Jabbar. You know, it's, it's amazing, though. I mean, here's a guy, that, and they're pretty good, four and four. They're still in the thick of things, and starting, some, sometimes during the year, starting seven rookies. Second and four, two minutes left in the half. to the 25 and just inside it where it'll be third and about a yard and a half. Song of Pulatelli leading the defensive charge. Then Coates fumble giving Miami a chance to build on the 14-7 lead. 
Meanwhile, Abdul Jabbar's rushing numbers here in the first half. Very impressive in light of uh, how difficult it's been to run for Miami in the last five games. Well, I think it goes back to what Jimmy Johnson told us last night. They match up very well against this New England team, so they feel like they can physically come out here and do some things they probably couldn't even think about doing last week against the Dallas Cowboys. Third and two. tackle from Texas A&M. Well, here's where New England is going to should take a timeout, and I think they're going to. Will the Patriots take the timeout? Jimmy Johnson, uh, will he go for the field goal? We'll be right back. We get word that uh, Dan Marino complaining he can't hear the radio call from the sideline. Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson brings out his field goal unit. Doesn't mean he wouldn't try a fake. He uh, has that all in the playbook. Nedney, this would be a 45-yard attempt into the win. His longest this year is 39. Rookie gets it on the way. It is no good. Wide to the left. So the Patriots escape an interception, and now Ben Coates fumble. Miami unable to take advantage. Well, you know, this, this ball looks the strings are fine. He just pushes the ball. You know what he was playing on? He put it out to the left, hoping that the wind would bring it back because the wind is blowing from That's his right. left to right. And it stayed out there. It didn't come back in. When they were kicking during warm-ups before the game, the wind was blowing 20 to 30 miles an hour. And Paul, this shot would have gone down the middle before the game, but the wind has died down and did not affect the football that time. New England takes over with a minute three seconds left in the half in good field position at their own 35. Let's go. Dumps it off to Meggett. Meggett gets 11. First down at the 46. Zach Thomas makes the tackle. Hurry up, New England offense. This is where Meggett is such a valuable asset, as uh, our partner Phil Sims will emerge. Similar in size, Brown with his uh, sixth catch of the year, 13 yards. Time uh, out as he goes out of bounds. As we remind you to stay tuned for our Domino's Pizza halftime report. Greg Mendel, Mike Pickard, Joe Gibbs, Chris Collinsworth, Ahmad Rashad. Oh, the official of the defender as Meggett couldn't get around the umpire. Meggett fighting his way through uh, the umpire in such a dangerous position for any official is that umpire spot where you're in the thick of uh, the action. Bill Parcells was yelling to one of the uh, officials on the sideline telling the other one to get out of the way, but Dave Meggett, nobody around him, no defender. All of them were at least 10 to 15 yards deep down the field. Drew Butzel doing a good job of seeing the underneath receiver wide open. 34 seconds left in the half. sidelines right at the 30 they mark it it would appear to be a first down a 10-yard play stops the clock with 28 seconds showing what a great block he got from Dave Meggett Dave yeah. Meggett gets to the outside and just hammers yes he did but even though he went out of bounds and the clock is stopped they are not humble enough keep the defense in turmoil don't give them a chance to regroup and that's what Drew Butzel has done twice in this drive. Meggett unable to pull that one in. Probably wouldn't have gotten much anyway. 24 seconds left. Again, no use huddling up if you're the offense. Drew Butzel, this way the defense usually doesn't make any changes. They play the same defense you saw in the previous play. Down the middle. And open is Glenn. First down at the 15. Timeout, New England. Bill Parcells' team trying to rally for a tie before the half ends. When you, when you look at this thing, Dick, look where Bledsoe puts this ball. It's out in front of the receiver. The only person that can catch it is the receiver. Defender really has no chance. That's a perfect throw. But a pretty good catch, uh, well covered by Tim Jacobs as Glenn out muscling him for it. His fifth catch of the half for Glenn, who now has 42 on the year. First down at the 15, 19 seconds left. One time. Caught and out of bounds goes Glenn as he's horse-collared at about the seven. 
Lewis Oliver, the defender. Eight yards on the play. 14 seconds remain. That whole play took five seconds. Joe Parcell sends in three men and then calls them back. And I believe that's going to be a... Now they were reaching for the yellow flag, and now they're going to call time. Miami. Miami Miami's called time. The final charge timeout. When they saw the three substitutes come on, Miami said that being stuck with that save versus Elfield. That That's was right. That was a wise call. Well, I think it confused everybody. Drew Bledsoe was calling the plays at the line of scrimmage. He wasn't listening to the sideline, and Parcells, I think, was trying to get in a different play. Boy, if you uh, still want more football after our doubleheader today, how about Mike Ditka's alien guide to football? Ditka. Man, there ain't enough O's in the word for that man. He's got it all. <laughs> He's got all the moves, doesn't he? Mikey, Mikey. Second down and two, 14 seconds at the seven-yard line. And the whistle blows it dead against whom? Tim Bowen's charge, was he drawn? Well, he had actually two Miami players the two tackles inside both went off encroachment number 95 in the defense half the distance to the goal that will be a first down it's a good job by Drew Bledsoe look at the interior lineman of the Miami defense Bowens and Gardner to both jump outside but Drew Bledsoe going on a long count trying to get a free play down inside the 10 yard line first and goal outside the three 14 seconds still remain Gash and Maggot behind Bledsoe they believe it's off for Coates incomplete and a flag down in the end zone Coates could not get around Lewis Oliver which way did the officials see it well if all you have to do is look at Lewis Oliver's left arm. He's got it pushing Coates with his left arm, Coach and he reaches defense. in and knocks the ball Number down with his right. The defense in the end zone, by rule, the ball is placed at the one yard line. When you don't complain that much, you know that you committed pass interference. Not only that, he never turns around and looks at the ball. He impedes the receiver, where the receiver has no chance to come back and get the football. Definitely pass interference. Well, they mark it on the one, first and goal. Ten seconds remain. Runner pass. Let's go. Had to throw it away, and a flag is down in the end zone. Six seconds left. Keith Byers was the man Bledsoe was looking to. You know why? <laughs> 12, men 12 men on the field for the Miami. Defense, half the distance, still first down. They had <laughs> was looking, and they tried to sneak one guy off. Aaron Jones tries to sneak off afterwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Couldn't get them all in there, but an extra defensive back. Oh no, 97, an extra defensive lineman out there. But after the play, Aaron Jones tries to sneak off the off the field, but they'd already caught him. Now they put the four seconds back on the clock. Ten seconds. three seconds back it was down to six they put it to ten now reduced it to seven then you'll have to figure that one out yourself well they still have one timeout left so it does give new england a chance to run the football if they want to and call a timeout in this situation Because if you take a look at the clock with Martin in the end zone, there's still four seconds on the clock. They had the opportunity to run a run a play and to call a timeout. Still wouldn't run the clock on that. Wouldn't call. You're at home. They won't let the clock run out on you. Jimmy <laughs> Terry trying to get you to the extra point here, missing three this season, but he's good twice today. And with four seconds left in the half, it's tied at 14. Now, 
They got the ball with 103 left after the missed field goal by Nedney, and here's the end result. Barely in, Martin right at the goal line. Curtis Martin just giving a little extra effort and being tough inside because Miami's defensive line gets some penetration and actually hits him a yard or two away from the end zone. John Burke with a solid block to help Martin in. And Bill Parcells, he knows where his money man is, Drew Bledsoe. Well, you know, when we looked at the Miami defense in that entire drive, so the safeties were like 20 yards off. They played a true prevent defense. Now, they're going to say, well, that's not our prevent. Yes, it is. <laughs> you get, you know, I always say about the prevent, the reason I don't like it, it prevents a team from getting a field goal, and it enables them to get a touchdown. And in this case, all Drew Bledsoe did was just throw underneath the two safeties and just march right down the field. He had a minute and 19 seconds. Paul, you're right. The one thing I do not like about the prevent defense, it always allows the offense to get started, get the drive going, you get in some rhythm, and once an offense gets in rhythm, they usually throw some good plays together, and like you say, it gives them a chance to score touchdowns. That was an impressive drive in a minute and four seconds, 65 yards. Helped out uh, on a couple of occasions by Miami penalties. Vinatieri just splits one down, and seconds to go away and that'll be it for the half. So Drew Bledsoe and Dan Marino hooked up in a tight duel, 14 all. We'll send you to our NFL and NBC studio in New York after a message from the NFL and a word from you. Approach the second half. Let's look at the course Light halftime statistics. It'll show that Miami, Miami indeed did what uh, run the football 72 yards to only seven for New England. Well, one thing about this game, when you look at the two turnovers, they should mean something, but the two, two turnovers... That Now this season with throwing the football and winning some tough games at the end. We talked to both coaches yesterday and they both said the same thing. We are so evenly matched. This is going to come down to final possession. They both thought this would be a game one in the final minutes and so it appears to be. A, we start the second half. Vinatieri line drive. Spikes picks it up on the bounce. 15. 20. Flag down as Spice moves it to the 27-yard line, tackled by Wiggum. Now let's check the penalty. Well, these two coaches, there are a lot of twos in there. They're tied today and a lot of twos. They both have two Super Bowl championships. Both have two. Holding number 51 on the return, 10 yards, first down. Both have two opportunities as head coaches in the NFL. But what's really important, what really makes them what they are today, two years working for the network. That's what, <laughs> there you go. That's right. That's what got them back into coaching. Uh, <laughs> will they work with you? Oh, no, 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 they work uh, with you. Uh -uh. Oh, Miami with a 10 yard penalty on the return starts at the 17. Clay from the safety spot. Jim Gray, what do you have for us? Well, I spoke with both coaches, Dick. First, Bill Parcell said the second quarter was the worst quarter we have played all year. He said he told his guys we're very lucky to survive it and hopefully we'll be able to come out with a victory. Now, as for Jimmy Johnson, he said the radio communications really hampered them as well as the injury to his running back in the first half because he said that was the guy that we used to communicate the plays and with our communications out, we really struggled there and it hurt us at the end of the half. Dick? Thank you, Jim. Referring to Jarris McPhail, who broke his arm and is out for the year. Drop by Abdul Jabbar, perhaps guilty of the run before the catch was secured. One of the things that surprised me in that first half, uh, Phil, is, is, is Miami. I, we thought, talking to Jimmy Johnson, their defense would be aggressive, an aggressive defense. They are not. They have not played aggressively. And we're talking about in the secondary, folks. That's right. The two corners and safeties. I saw one blitz in the first drive that they caught New England off guard. But besides that, I've seen all what we've seen from Miami all year long, a defense that's sitting back, just trying not to give up the big play. Well, you know, that guy wearing 13 will play aggressively. Third and eight. Guns it to the sideline. 
one, but it's one hop incomplete. Lamar Thomas is going to argue, but it appeared to bounce in. Jimmy Hitchcock covering for New England. So the punting team on and John Kidd to kick it for the Dolphins. So a quick three and out for Jimmy Johnson's Miami team. The wind uh, still blowing into the face of the kicker kid, but uh, not with as nearly the velocity of earlier today. Megat stands at his own 40. Good kick. out across the 45-yard line. 15 on the return. A 50-yard punt. Patriot uh, cheerleaders so well muffled. As you look at the quarterback comparison, Bledsoe solid 15 for 20 in that first half. This is on his first attempt for Terry Glenn. It is indeed 50 degrees cooler today than it was almost two months ago to the day when they played in Miami. Hurry up offense. He's got four wide receivers out there with Megan. It worked at the end of the half, so Parcells comes out with it to start the second half. Throw to the sideline. complete. And it's Hassan Graham with his first catch today. J.B. Brown on the coverage. Right at the sticks. First down. Well, they had success with it at the end of the first half, so now why not stay with it? And, it, and what it did at the end of the first half, it made Miami play very soft and vanilla type defense. That's a handy fumbles, and it's recovered by the Dolphins at the 47 yard line. Fans uh, claiming that Bledsoe had his arm forward. Daryl Gardner recovers the ball, but it was Daniel Stubbs who will get the forced fumble and his eighth sack of the year. Stubbs with the third Miami turnover today. Well, it was actually good protection by the New England line, but Drew Bledsoe cannot find somebody open down the field, has to hold on to it just a fraction longer, and that is a fumble. His arm was not going forward. Good call by the officials. Well, you can see his arm was, arm was going forward after, after he's hit. Right here he's hit, and then he moves his arm forward. That ball came out. That's an excellent call. Bruce Armstrong not beaten very often, but Stubbs got him. Moreno starts at the 46. What? What? Runs it to the sidelines. And by Hitchcock. Flag is down. Hitchcock to the 45. Picks up blockers. And to the 35-yard line. But was there interference? The flag is back at the spot where Hitchcock picked it off. 42-yard return if... It's coming back. You know, this is twice now on Hitchcock. Once it was a holding penalty. Pass interference. Number 41. Defense. First down. I don't think it's 41. Because 41 is Keith Byers, and he's on the offense. So I think it's 31. And Hitchcock, again, they have pass interference on him. Plus Jimmy Hitchcock, number 31, against Randall Hill, and he sticks that left arm out, and that has to be what the referee saw. Boy, they don't call that very often, though. They've been letting that go all year long. Sometimes if you stick that left arm out, they think you are getting in the way of the receiver, stopping his progress, and they will call that a, a pass interference. See, everybody has a right to the ball once the ball is in the air, but what happened with Hitchcock did is he, when he put that arm in there, he pushed off. And as he pushed off, the, the defender goes down. Sold it. The, I think the, def, the, the, the receiver sold it very well. 22-yard penalty plus the 44 yards that New England didn't get on the return. There's a big, big play in this game. Abdul Jabbar on first down. And a little scuffle after the play, and flags fly. Dale Hamer's hat as well. Troy Drayton, the tight end. Such an important game, and from the start, the hitting has been at the highest of level, and the emotions, of course, carrying the ferocity of play. You see Marino in there trying to sell it? Yeah, everybody's <laughs> in there. Well, they're all lawyers. First and foul. I'm ready for the offense. In the action. They ticket Troy Drayton, the tight end. Here's Troy Drayton right up in here. 
He gets hit by Jones, and then he retaliates. And the only thing the officials see is retaliation. And what you, you know, it, it, it normally is that way. Second man in. That's a big a penalty to absorb for Miami as Drayton is pulled out by Johnson, and Brett Kerlin replaces him at tight end. They mark the penalty back out to the 36-yard line. This is the third turnover the Miami Dolphins have gotten today, and they really haven't taken advantage of them. And Paul, you say it so many times, you talk about you only get so many chances in a football game, and I think Jimmy Johnson realizes they've got to take advantage of this. The play stands, the run stands, although they haven't changed the down box. It's after the play, the penalty. You know, just to underline, if you're a New England fan, you'd be nervous about that turnover. Whenever and recently, Bill Parcells' team, they've given it away more than they've taken it away. They're 0 and 10. They're 7 and 1 when they're in the plus column, taking it away more than coughing it up. See, I think that's what Bill Parcells is complaining about now. He wants it to be second down because this actually occurred after the play. So the Patriots are minus three today. And yet, it, to this point, has not cost them the three turnovers. 21-yard penalty is what it amounts to. And first down, Marino. Eighth complete. Picks up the fullback inside the 25-yard line. Perfect throw on the run. Hits his fullback, Collins and Malloy. Make the stop 12 on the play. But when you say it's unfair to have a linebacker on a back, it's Pritchett and Collins. So watch Pritchett. He just delays, comes underneath. Now Collins has to run with him. And Marino just hits Pritchett right away on, on the play. I mean, it's just a nice, easy pickup. Dan Marino immediately sees it's man-to-man -man coverage and Pritchett too fast for Collins. And he, that's the one thing Dan Marino does better than anybody. Make a quick decision, throw the football. Second and nine. McGinnis was first there, number 55, who's had a big season for the Patriots defensively with five sacks and, of course, an interception touchdown against Buffalo last week. A reminder, next week here on NBC, here's our lineup beginning at 12 noon Eastern with the NFL on NBC. Most of you will see the Patriots against the Jets. Other AFC East showdown, Dolphins hosting Harbaugh on the Colts. Some of you will get the Bills battle with the Eagles or regional action. It all starts 12 noon next Sunday here on NBC. Third down. Incomplete. It appeared Miami's Randall Hill had a touchdown, but Jimmy Hitchcock denied. Got a hand in, ripped it away. An excellent job by Jimmy Hitchcock, number 31 of the New England Patriots. Dan Marino again sees the man coverage outside. Randall Hill looks at the top of your screen. He tries to throw the ball to the line before the defender turns around, but Jimmy Hitchcock, he knows Marino will do that. Got his hands up at the last second to deflect the ball. It deflects the ball, but look at the ball. Hits it Hill right in the shoulder pads, and that's what Marino looked at him about. You know, catch the ball. I'm going to hit you with it, but that was a hard catch. 39-yard field goal attempt, net knee. This time, he knocks it in. Oh, the Dolphins take advantage of the turnover. Enjoy a three-point lead. Dubs sack and force fumble against Bledsoe leads to the 39-yard field goal, and Jim Gray with a special friend. Well, a very special friend and a guy that all the professional football is missing right now. Don Shula here to watch his former team. Don, how much do you miss being on the sidelines, particularly a close game like this one? Well, this is what it's all about. You know, I've been here for 33 years as a head coach, so you don't walk away from something like this without missing it. I didn't miss training camp, and I didn't miss some of the other things, the preseason. But once the regular season starts, that's where uh, uh, you miss the competition more than anything else. All right, Dick's going to give us the kickoff, and... Uh, we're going to get your assessment of the Dolphins. We'll, we'll be right back with you, Don. Dick. Edney kicks it off. 17-14 Miami. At the 12. Right, Fighting for that extra yard across the 35. So far, Don, of how the Dolphins have done this year, they're 4-4. Four four. 
Well, they started out obviously great, and uh, they had a running game, and then they seemed to get away from that. And today, they're back to the running game. They're controlling the line of scrimmage, and they've got the takeovers. That's what helped them win the games early in the year. You got to get the, the takeaways, and you got to control the line of scrimmage, and you see them doing that here today. Everybody has been very careful not to use the word retirement with you. <laughs> There's already been a couple of coaches, including your son, who've lost his job. As we watch the play, we're going to ask you about your future. What about your future? Will you coach again, and will you consider some offers this offseason? Well, I haven't even thought about it. You know, I'm at peace with myself over the decision that I made, and I'm trying to enjoy this season, and uh, and uh, there are times where I enjoy it, and other times I miss it. But uh, I, I haven't made any uh, judgments as to what I want to do, and... Uh, I'm going to get through this year and then see what happens. How much input, if any, do you have? You were reluctant at first to be involved with the Dolphins at all. You have spoken with Jimmy on a number of occasions. How much input do you have now with the Dolphins? I'm vice chairman of the board of directors and a part owner, but I don't do anything as far as day-to-day uh, -day involvement with the Dolphins. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, you know, I'd like to see him have a good year, uh, get into the playoffs, and win. I'd love to see Dan Marino wear that Super Bowl ring. That, that's what you got yours on. I that. got mine on, and, and I'd love to see Dan get one because if anybody deserves it, the way that he's competed through the years and the records that he's set, you know, that's that's what you hope for. Don, it's great to see you. You were honored before the game. Congratulations. Enjoy this time off since we won't call it a retirement. Thank you. Back over to you, Dick. Thanks, Jim, and all the best to Don Shula. Bob Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots, making a special uh, presentation to Don Shula and thanking him for his great years in this great game. We have a timeout. We'll return to Foxborough in a moment. Welcome back. On that last play, watch Bledsoe. Is this a forward pass or a lateral? Well, this ball is going to land behind Bledsoe, but the officials say that it was not a lateral. Megan did the smart thing. He picked that thing up off the ground. He knew that was behind. That would have been an eight-yard gain in the first down. Instead, it's third and one. Play action. Bledsoe down the middle. Intercepted. Sean Wooden. And Wooden has the fourth turnover of the game. Miami at the New England 36. Now, there was some aggressive defense. A little bit. Well, yes, it was an aggressive throw call by Drew Bledsoe and Sean Wooden playing free safety. Nobody to cover. Sees Terry Glenn coming across the field. Watch Sean Wooden. Sees the ball coming. He does an excellent job, though, of coming forward, being aggressive, attacking the football once it's in the air. But Drew Bledsoe falling away from the line of scrimmage, thrown across his body. That's a tough throw to, to try to make in the NFL. Wooden, the rookie from Notre Dame, his second interception of the year, leading 17-14. Less than 11 remaining in the third quarter. It's Abdul Jabbar, rookie, rookie, rookie on this Jimmy Johnson team, and he fumbles. Does it count? No signal yet by the officials. What a weird game. Maybe it's a hangover from Halloween. We've had balls bouncing the entire game, and calls, difficult calls to make. Well, let's start way back at the beginning of the first quarter when, 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 when Megan fumbled the ball going into the end zone. They give it to him. They said hit the pylon. It was out of bounds. Then a fumble on a touchdown by Curtis Martin. New England, New Orleans. It's, it's incredible what's happening. Took a while to decide, but the officials agree it's New England's ball. That will Jabbar. He thought he was down. Let's see. Oh, he was oh, clearly he's down. down. He's down. Clearly down. I mean, this game may be another strong bid for instant replay. Because Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is on the ground right here. Now, you see the ball in his arm? Now, he has it clearly. The ball comes out. This is a terrible call. But all the officials must have been screened. No one saw it. And Jimmy Johnson, we're going to have to put a straitjacket on him. Well, you see, what happened is Jimmy Johnson sees the replay oh, in here. Yeah. tough calls go against his team the last few weeks so it, it keeps building up in the coach and they keep seeing these mistakes by referees and that's why you get that reaction so a questionable call and Patriots take over their 28 Bledsoe guns it complete again to Terry Glenn Glenn continues to rack up the numbers 13 more yards for the rookie on his eighth catch of the game well the ground cannot cause a fumble and you can clearly see Abdul-Jabbar has 
and he hits the ground. But the problem is, look at all the officials. There's so many bodies around, nobody can tell if the ball really came out. I tell you, you're looking at it this year. There's some so many plays that can be used as far as uh, history replay coming back again in some form. It's not a perfect world, and this certainly has been a game not called very perfectly. Good play action again by Bledsoe. He guns it. Strong Jefferson and a flag down as Jefferson out of bounds at the 29. They're going to call this offensive pass interference on Sean Jefferson because he pushed off in order to come back. He sure was open. Yeah, oh, yeah that'll well, help. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you know, you can open. This really helps, Dick. When you shove the guy down the field, uh, and then you come back to the ball. But I tell you, he had no reason to push off. He had Calvin Jackson running down That's the field. That's interference. Offense, number 84, 10 yards, their first down. The Patriots basically were sending uh, Sean Jefferson out against Calvin Jackson one-on-one -on -one and no other receivers down the field. He sells the long pattern, and he uses both hands to push off. I mean, Calvin Jackson, you're right, he was gone anyway. He was, he was looking for the deep ball. When the quarterback holds the ball that long, usually that defensive back knows, look long, he's trying to throw it on us. And it's a 40-yard play, 10 on the penalty and 30 that they didn't get on the catch. Screen. Curtis Martin, 35. Into the corner, 40, 50. Curtis Martin to the 20. Sam Dash is blocking on him way downfield, but he makes Curtis Martin make a move. Here it comes right here. See this here? There's Jackson with, with, with uh, Sam Dash, and he actually makes the play. Good hustle by Daniel Stubbs as well, the big lineman to get downfield. 42-yard play. Mega. Inside the 25. Miami leads 17-14. The Patriots trying to take advantage of a highly questionable fumble call against this man, Abdul-Jabbar. Have it uh, inside the Dolphin 25 at the 23, second down and five. Well, it turned the ball over four times today so far. We still have eight minutes to go in the third quarter. You're down 17 to 14. You're lucky. But they only got three points out of four turnovers, the Miami Dolphins. Still burning inside on the call that set up the drive. Vinatieri. 21-17 New England. 23 yards on the touchdown. Well, it's a good job for the Patriot. An excellent call. Drew Bledsoe moving to his right, throws back across the field to Ben Coates, who is wide open. a couple of yards and gets the touchdown. Bledsoe three for three on the drive. 77 yards. The old Parcells Patriots enjoy a four-point advantage. While New England's coughed it up four times and managed only three Miami points out of that. So the uh, Patriots opportunistic. 77 yards and four quick plays for the lead. Irving Spikes. Check that. Charles Jordan. And Jordan draws a crowd of blue out of the 27-yard line. Mario Greer leading the way. Let's go back to the touchdown. Well, look at Ben Coates at the top of your screen. He's going to run what they call a flag pattern, a play action this way. But watch 
Lewis Oliver, number 25, his reaction. Most teams, when they fake this bootleg, they throw to the right. The Patriots do the opposite. They throw across the field, back to the left. That's the reason Ben Coates was wide open. Watch this, folks. You think Bledsoe like this little slap on a hiney? Whoops. No, that hurt. <laughs> Moreno comes back gunning, and it's incomplete to Abdul-Jabbar. Sangapulatelli, the defensive tackle, the 300-pounder from San Diego State, has Moreno wincing. You've heard defensive linemen playing against the Miami Dolphins or in Dan Marino. It has to be so frustrating. You get through, you do an excellent job, you get a free shot at the quarterback, and Dan Marino always gets rid of the football. He took it on the officials, but he took more than one step before he hit Marino. They've had a tough day. field tackle by Ted Johnson, the middle backer. Only four on the play. Johnson, Carlsbad, California, grew up, went to high school very near where they had all those tragic fires just a week ago out near La Costa. The only, the, the only real chance that a, that a linebacker has on a back like Abdul-Jabbar is Johnson because as soon as he saw Jabbar, Abdul-Jabbar coming out of the backfield, he went directly towards him, and that's his man. He went after him and got him. Third and six. Three for nine on third down today. Well below their average. With the sidelines incomplete intended for Charles Jordan. Scooter Magruder, an extra defensive back on the coverage. The punting team on for Jimmy Johnson. This is not what you, what you talk about at halftime. The Miami Dolphins, they go in. They know they're going to get the ball back on the kick. They come out three and out. They get the ball again, three and out. They make it just two away from the all-time record of eight touchdowns on punt returns. Beautiful kick by Kidd to the 16. And Mega doesn't get uh, more than a couple of yards. Timeout, 7-0-4, remaining in the third. Reminder, next Saturday at 4 Eastern on NBC, it's the EMC Skills Challenge. You'll see Arnold Palmer, the Player of the Year, the Varden Trophy winner Tom Lehman, John Daly, Hale Irwin, and others. They'll drive, long and short game, bunker shots, putting, and the crucial trouble shot. That's next Saturday on NBC. Dave Meggett for a couple to the 19-yard line. That, uh, they call that one, uh, Phil, uh, they call that one area the uh, Maguire's, the palm of the trouble shot. The trouble shot? Yeah, the Maguire, they call that. Uh -huh. I don't have trouble. I mean, my, my swing isn't pretty, but uh, it gets no, the job uh, done. Really? Yeah, it's it gets it done. Second and eight into the flat. Complete to Troy Brown and Jim Jacobs there on the coverage. At the 26, it'll be third and two. Look at uh, what the defense of Miami has allowed the opposing quarterback the last three games. And anytime quarterbacks complete this high a percentage of their pass, I don't care if they're throwing little dump passes, your defense is in trouble. And three straight games, the Miami defense just cannot stop the passing game. Third and a long one. Twenty-seven, twenty-seven and a half by Terrell Buckley, who raced up from his corner position, and is going to be close enough to measure. Buckley with his sixth interception of the season earlier today. Oh, they gave him a good spot. Well, it was really a good job by Curtis Martin taking the ball outside. Everything was uh, covered inside, and Terrell Buckley just came flying up to make a good tackle. Now, my question here is, here's a first down, and you're only up by four points, and they were moving the ball with a hurry-up offense. They, they no huddle. They were, they were attacking. Uh, do you stop attacking now? And you kind of, you know, when do you just say, okay, let's just try to run the ball a little bit. Let's get some stuff off the clock, because this third quarter has lasted about an hour and a half, hasn't it? Ray oh. Perkins making the calls upstairs. 
some pressure this time they bring six players on defense make the quarterback make a decision tight coverage down the field Drew Bledsoe has to throw the football before he's ready and Calvin Jackson did an excellent job of staying close to the receiver it's 47 seconds left in the third to Jefferson and he is at the 35 yard line it'll be third down three Jackson leading the charge with Wooden helping out so taking what they'll give him, and he's now 22 for 31, just under 300 yards on the game. One touchdown, two interceptions, and he also fumbled once while Marino looking for that first scoring throw. And if you go to throw the football lot, you can't be concerned with those interceptions. And Bill Parcells told us yesterday, he told Drew Bledsoe, I want you to be tenacious, throw the ball down the field, and take some chances. is drilled by Oliver. Lewis Oliver read it all away. No gain. This is what I thought they meant about an aggressive pass defense. What Lewis Oliver does here to Sam Gash. Lewis Oliver comes up the field. They, they just throws this little flick to the outside and look at here. Bam. I mean, there was absolutely uh, about a half yard loss on the play. So Tom Tupa comes in to punt. Former Penn State star O.J. McDuffie at the other end at the 16. to stay tuned after the game. Peril in the... A dying man calls out for help. Only the Navy SEALs can save his life. It's an incredible life and death rescue on the high seas. Watch Dateline NBC tonight after the game on NBC. Miami trailing 21-17. Four minutes plus left in the third. the defensive attack well the Miami Dolphins uh, when you have possessions in the second half you take a look what they've done with it take a look three plays and that's that, here's the ones that you really want to take a look at in the middle the three plays five plays one play in a fumble and three plays again you punt the ball away I mean your offense isn't doing anything you've got to keep this defense off the, off the field that's the one thing the Marino said to us we've got to help the defense we've got to move the ball and control it that fumble came one play after Sean Woodson had intercepted at the New England 36. Only three more on the catch as Malloy and Hitchcock wrap up Pritchett. Third down and uh, short six. You know, the guy, the only, the, only, the only time you really mention this guy's name in this game, one of their leaders here, O.J. McDuffie. I mean, uh, on punt returns. Has he caught a pass? Six yards. McDuffie is their third down receiver. Marino, lots of time, has McDuffie open. And he has it at the 40 yard line. First down, Miami. Well, boys, see, you got to get the guy in the game. I called yeah. down to Dan. I said, look, you know, OJ McDuffie has been open. You haven't thrown the ball to him. So let's put him in motion, set him out to the outside. He runs down through the seam and a perfect pass. And again. Oh, you are. You are sagacious. No question about that. Yeah. Sagacious? Yeah. What is it? I don't know. 41 yard line. Seriously, what a wizard. You're, oh, okay. you're wise. wise. Your years make you very wise, Paul. <laughs>
This is a play where Dan Marino just overestimates his arm. What he tries to do again is throw that ball in a line drive to the outside and tries to get it over the defender before he turns around. But Jimmy Hitchcock, he's looking back at the quarterback the whole way. He is not fooled and makes an excellent interception. You know what I really like about this play is Willie Clay, he reads it right away. He's looking back at Reno. He gets over to even try to help. He doesn't have to because Hitchcock done it. But on the left-hand side of the screen, you see Willie Clay coming in? He was there to help out if need be. So Hitchcock with his second interception of the season. And Hill stops him at the 10-yard line. So Marino intercepted for the first time today. It remains 21-17 New England. Hit in the backfield is Curtis Martin, Dwight Collier, a loss of a yard. Dan Marino never likes this to happen. Well, I think he knows he, it's not really the, the decision. He made a good decision on where to throw football, just what type of ball to throw. Should have thrown it higher and to the outside instead of throwing the line drive. And uh, the win, Jim Gray talked about it at the start of the game. Uh, that factored in. So, quickie uh, uh, to Sean Jefferson, Buckley on the coverage, six yards on the play to the 15, it's third and five. Second half, and this is third quarter, all these possessions. We have nine possessions in the quarter, we have a minute 18 left, two turnovers aside. And I, I really do believe a lot of these turnovers today, the interception, especially the fumbles, but just because the fact that it is cold, the ball is hard and slick, and it's just getting away from the players. and Stewart there to cover Michael Stewart. Yes, yeah, they got away from the game plan. I mean, before he was throwing the ball like curls in the middle of the field. He was throwing deep comebacks to players. Now he's throwing little, little junk stuff. Well, what, what's happening, Paul, the last couple times, New England is guessing wrong. Miami's defense has changed up. That time they had three defensive linemen down, four linebackers in. They blitzed off of it, and I think it's confusing New England, New England right now. Tupa will receive the snap at the goal line. McDuffie at the... 37 of Miami. Tupa. Short kick and a good catch. McDuffie at the 41 yard line. 44 on the punt. Well, there's, there's a turnover that uh, didn't hurt Marino. In fact, they get the ball back in very, very good field position. And we, talk, we didn't. It's interesting that we haven't really talked about Marino's injury. Here's a man that had a broken ankle just uh, five, six weeks ago, and uh, here operating as if, uh, well, obviously didn't catch our attention. He is well protected. Well, he is. Yeah, he is very well protected. That body has every piece of equipment on that the, the lead makes. And look at his. We had a little shot there. We'll see it later of his right foot, the special shoe he wears now to, to protect that right ankle and Achilles tendon. And Bill Jabbar. Side, so he makes something outside, gain of four. You know, you're absolutely right, Phil. If you if you just take a look, I don't understand how he moves with all the padding he has. I tell you, he can move around still very well, but you can see he has the hip pads in. He has a little pad in the back because last year he hurt his, uh, well, he fell on his rear end and he hurt it pretty bad. He has two braces, on, one brace on each knee, and then on the right, right ankle, look at that big boot he has on. And still has a little bit of a limp, but Dan Marino, he's wise. He wears everything he can to protect himself. And he's got nothing on that right arm. <laughs> That's right. That's great. He comes that incomplete to Abdul Jabbar. Will bring up third down and seven. Beginning of this game, does he still have that pouch on? He had a pouch or hand warmer, did they call it, on Marino. He doesn't wear that. I thought maybe he might have had a sandwich or something in there because you know, he spends a lot of time back there by himself. Oh, you know, you, you advised him. I, you, that's what you do. <laughs> no, he wouldn't keep a sandwich in there. <laughs> That'd be fun. That would be gone. Ty Law limped off, and Mike Magruder, number 27, replaces him at corner. So Marino looks at two backup corners, and Hitchcock and Magruder. something that surprised me about this. Now, Dan Marino standing back there all by himself.
himself really has all the time in the world to throw the ball. And look at these guys. They're really not coming back to him. Hill is the only one that makes an attempt to come back, but it's only a couple yards when he sees the ball in the air. But it was surprising to me because most of these receivers, I, I know you're able to turn and run, Phil, but they should come back and help Marino. Well, let's be honest. How often do they see Dan Marino scramble out of the pocket and they don't get a chance to practice that drill too often? Final play of the third quarter. Kid, uh, been unlucky, has to kick it into the wind. five-yard return. You're watching the NFL on NBC. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. With Phil Sims, Paul McGuire, and Jim Gray DeKemberg, welcome back to Foxborough. Some 59,000 plus have watched a terrific game. 21-17 New England. As Jimmy Johnson said, this will define our season. We need two wins this week. Next week against Indy, the show will be a playoff team. And New England trying to create some distance. Indianapolis has already lost. Let's spread it around. Sam Gash is interfered with. Chris Singleton there too soon. You know, Chris Number 55 of the defense. First down. Chris Singleton, you know, he's really get, get caught in a catch-22. Here he is. So here comes the ball. And when the ball is thrown, he is there just a little bit too soon. Look at he's going through the receiver, which is gashed to the ball. <laughs> and he hits him. Good call. Just a penalty of a handful of yards out to the 27. So He had the accelerators. Terry Glenn, just a little delay, and he sprints for 14 more before Sean Wooden can get him. And Drew Bledsoe has used nine different receivers in this game. He spread it around very effectively. Brown, Glenn, now Martin. And here's the payoff. This touchdown to Ben Coates. Well, that's the key to this offense, the fact that in years past, it was drop back and throw it to Ben Coates. Now Drew Bledsoe can drop back and throw it to one of seven or eight uh, good pass receivers. Curtis Martin slowed down in the backfield and loses a yard. Interestingly, and when you look at the, the skill positions for New England with Byers and Coates now and those wide receivers, uh, Jefferson and Glenn, and then the running backs as well, and Bledsoe, you'd say, this should be the best offense in the AFC East, but someone argues that it is not, and that was Bill Parcells. Well, he thinks the New York Jets are the best offense in the AFC, the AFC East, and he says, and he's, don't even take my word for it, just look it up. Yards, he's talking first downs, a lot of stats favor the New York Jets, but my argument is the New York Jets are doing a lot of that when they're way behind and the games are over. They're getting some of those stats. But I think that the New York Jets are going to decide who wins the AFC East because they're going to beat someone going down the second half of the season. Well, that's right. And the one thing he was right about, Bill Parcells, is the New York Jets do have some fine, skilled players on offense. So there's going to be a day when the defense puts it together. They come out there and that offense clicks. And, you know, you hope you're not the team that's uh, on the bad end of it. Ten catches today. This one aimed at Dave Meggett incomplete. You know, the one thing about this Miami team, when you look at it, they are, yeah, coming into this game four and four, Phil, but they've only lost one game in their division, and that's the Indianapolis. So if they can come out of here, that's why this game is so important to Miami, and next week against Indy, which if they knock them off, tw or they, they get even with Indy, but they could be really set in their division if they can win the next two games, this one and the, and the one after. You heard uh, Marino on the NFL on NBC earlier today say that uh, these are the two games that will determine whether or not we're a factor or whether we just play out the season. 21 17 New England. Tupa. Skies one. Into the frosty night and the fair catch by McDuffie at the 17. 44 on the punt. 13 plus remain. And Marino, this is his 192nd game as a Dolphin. That's the club record. Bob Kuchenberg played 190. He needs that many more. 162 passing yards for 50,000. No one close. Trailing by four. It's after Jabbar turning the corner. Gets him. Oh, he was.
was one man away from going the distance. Out of bounds at the 23. A gain of 11. You know what I like about him, Phil? The decisions he's, he makes with the ball. Watch, the, I mean, he gets some good blocking up front. But watch the decisions he makes. Here he comes to the outside. Now watch how quick he turns this. Now, I've got to get upfield and take what I can get. You're right, Dick. One play away from touchdown. He had 115 yards in game one down in Miami against New England over the century mark again. It's down to the 25. So we are seeing two outstanding rookies in this game. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar rushing for over 100 for Miami. And on the other side, the wide receiver for the New England Patriots, Terry Glenn, who has 10 catches. He's over 100 yards receiving. Well, Abdul-Jabbar, what I like about him is he reminds me of Emmett Smith in a way. He makes a decision, he does it right away, and he's always going forward, never east to west. He is a north-south runner. Second and eight. Marino comes it to the sideline. Big catch. Rolling is Charles Jordan to the sidelines. First down at the 35. Mike Magruder on the coverage. Well, Dan Marino on his way to throwing for 50,000 yards and still has that good arm, the hardest... Hardest throw a quarterback can make is that 10-yard uh, speed outcut by a receiver. And look at the hop, and Dan Marino gets that body behind almost every single throw. That's the reason why he's so accurate. The man with the perfect pass. Oh, he hits that line of scrimmage at full speed. Let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York for an update. All right, Dick, in Seattle, Houston and the Seahawks tied at nine. Steve McNair, sideline pass to Chris Sanders. Watch what he does to Selwyn Jones on the sidelines. Can't let him get away like that. See you later. 65-yard touchdown, and with the extra point, Houston on top of Seattle now. 16-9, about eight minutes to play in regulation, Dick. All right, Greg, can you imagine two years ago at Ohio State, they had Sanders, Galloway, and this kid, Glenn, <laughs> and they lost the game underneath. Good catch by Irving Spikes, and Spikes runs it into New England territory to the 45, a 19-yard play. Well, you know, we talk about Bledsoe spreading the ball around. Marino can spread it around. Look, he got Spikes in the backfield. Nobody comes up, so Spikes is free. Everybody's covered. He just dumps it over the middle. Now Spikes just takes off. And Dan Marino makes his decision so fast. We talk about why he's so hard to sack. And look at this. Look at the sacks by the other quarterbacks, Bernie and Craig Erickson, 11 and 6. Coming in today, Dan Marino has sacked three times all year. Spikes. Caught in the backfield. Willie McGinnis there to stop him with Todd Collins following up. And one of the, you know, a couple reasons why you cannot sack Dan Marino. One, he makes a decision so fast. He gets rid of it so fast. But we heard Richmond Webb talking about it to us yesterday. He just has great presence in the pocket. He always knows when to step up to buy himself that, that extra half second, which enables him to get the ball down the field. Less than 10 minutes to go. 21-17 New England. Second and a dozen. Thomas, and that's close to a first down at the Patriots 35. Phil, they sold the ranch on this play. New England sent everybody. They sent everybody, but Miami was not, not confused. They pick up the blitz, and watch how fast Dan Marino gets rid of the football. Two seconds, the ball is gone. Look at the safeties for the New England Patriots. The blitz all out. Jimmy Hitchcock, if he does not make the tackle up the top, it's a touchdown. Third and less than a yard. Two men in motion, so that'll cost Miami a first down. Abdul Jabbar easily with the first down. Ted Johnson made the tackle, but uh, two Dolphins in motion. But they tried to reset. I thought maybe the, the referee or the official would give them the benefit of the doubt. It looked like they reset, but maybe it wasn't for one full count. Robert Wilson is the guy number 49 that gets moving, and then he gets moving forward. Wilson 49 comes out, used in short yardage. 255 pound fullback. There's two, two guys moving at the same time. The wide receiver, watch Robert Wilson, the fullback. They're both moving, but then watch them reset. They know they made a mistake. 
Will be set. Apparently, uh, the referee judging not a full second. Three of 11 on third down is Marino. Good coverage again by the Patriots. They went to Jordan, and Otis Smith picked up as a free agent. Makes the play. I will tell you, you're absolutely correct. If there wasn't one man open, Marino tries to force this ball in, this perfect pass inside. He tries to force inside. It just doesn't work. That's Otis Smith. And here's Marino right from the from the get-go. He's looking. He's looking. But as he told us yesterday, if you're going to be a player in this league, you've got to throw passes when your men are covered. But again, he threw that incomplete pass, and he was looking and talking to his receiver. Let's it go. And it is saved by the Dolphins. A good play made by Terrell Buckley. He batted it back, and Robert Bailey covers. It'll be the two-yard line for Bledsoe when we return. On that last incompletion, Dan Marino wanted Charles Jordan to keep coming. Look at him. Charles Jordan says, Lags all over the field as Bledsoe throws from his own end zone. Intended for Ben Coates. All year on the coverage. <laughs> that, is but, a, that scene was the Yeah, freedom. it was good. Well, you, we didn't get to see it. Charles Jordan was, he pats himself on the chest. Off, offside, on the offense, lined up in the neutral zone. Penalty is declined, second down. Watch Charles Jordan, number 88. He goes, oh, yeah, my fault, Dan. See, I'm telling you about Marino. Marino is so positive. He said to Jordan, it was positively your fault. <laughs> Jordan said, you know, you're positively right. It well, wasn't my fault. Jordan goes, oh, he's throwing for almost 50,000. I think I'll let him tell me what's right and wrong. And if I argue with him, he's not going to throw me the ball anymore. Good point. The general is always right. Second and 10 as Patriots decline the penalty. Ends on again, let's complete to Keith Byers. Miami comes up with the ball, but the official says the play was dead. 13-yard gain. Lewis Oliver and Chris Singleton. Singleton came out of there with the ball. Drew Bledsoe from their own end zone throwing the ball down the middle of the field. A lot of bad things can happen down the middle of the field. Especially at your own end. It looked like Byers had lost the ball down around his knees. First down. Yeah. To coach. That's a tackle. Big man can run. Ben Coach. Touchdown. 84 yards. Oh. could not pick it up. He adjusted his route. He adjusted his feet. I'll tell you, he took off that <laughs> yeah. He got all that weight going forward. His legs had to keep up with it. And a military accident. And the Patriots lead 28-17. It appeared that Keith Byers might have thrown a key block downfield. But Drew Bledsoe sees the blitz, does an excellent job of getting rid of the football. And look, Keith Byers coming back, making a good block. Ben Coach doing a show of the speed he has at the tight end position. Drew Bledsoe, his longest ever touchdown pass by a bunch, 84 yards to Ben Coates, and a former Dolphin was a key player, the block by Byers, to spring him loose. That breaks the Bledsoe's longest by 22 yards. Previous was a 62-yarder to Coates. Three plays, 98 yards for the Patriots to open the lead. Vinatieri, plenty of time left, midpoint, fourth quarter. Charles Jordan. 
And he's out across the 30-yard line. Well, you want the Dolphins to be aggressive on defense. They were this time. They blitz, and they get burned. Ben Coates up top is going to break his round off. Watch the blitzers by Miami. The secondary knows they can't pick it up. They're waiting for the adjustment. They come up too fast. Ben Coates, when he stops, they overrun him. And Keith Byers coming back and making a block to spring Ben Coach for the touchdown. Well, watch, you see Lewis Oliver right there, number 25. He would possibly catch Ben Coach, but Keith Byers, the other tight end, coming back to help his buddy. Touchdown. That left only Shane Burton, a lineman, to chase Coach. And the Patriots appear to have it again as well. coming out and making big plays has put Miami's offense in a tough situation where they have to pass the football and now in these situations the New England pass rush can come alive and play nothing but pass well what happens is watch Marina now he's got Webb on that side so you've got all the confidence in the world on your backside. he just waited too long and helped McGinnis never quit got around Webb and made the play a couple of years. I think this is really Marino's fault because Dan Marino is standing back there waiting so long. Webb pushes to the outside. Parmalee gets in Webb's way. McGinnis never quits and he comes through. Not only does he knock the ball, almost got the fumble or he did get the fumbles. And Al Groh is there. But Al Groh, the defensive coordinator, tells him this is what you get when you keep hustling. You never know what can happen on any given play. Willie McGinnis with his hustle gets around and causes the fumble. He was picked as a number one Southern California with big biography in college. Now he's starting to produce here. Another interference call against Lewis Oliver this time against John Burke, the tight end. But Lewis Oliver is saying right there, now he's on Burke's back, but what Oliver is saying, I'm going for the ball, and I tripped up on his feet. But that doesn't make any difference. He hit the man. You can go through the mat to the ball if you only hit the ball, but you can't hit the man going through. Well, that wasn't an incidental tripping, if that's what he's asking That's for. what he was saying. He said, yeah. like, you know, that's what Oliver's saying. He, Lewis Oliver's saying, look, I'm tripping, but he's not. He's on his back, and he's got his arm around him. Interference call puts the ball at the 11-yard line. No question about this. That, that was the same play they threw to Ben Coach for the touchdown early in the game. They came back with it. Lewis Oliver read it right, just a little too anxious. Seventeen New England here. Let's go to New York for an update. All right, Dick, at Minnesota, Kansas City's Greg Hill. Watch him turn the corner here, and from 17 yards out, goes into the end zone. Then after an interception, he added a 10-yard touchdown. Minnesota started 4-0. They're now looking at their fourth loss in five games. They trail 21-0, three minutes to play, Dick. Yeah, it's a big game for Marty Schottenheimer's Chiefs as Tim Bowens. A big defensive tackle of the Miami Dolphins injured on that last play. Now what's at stake here in the AFC East? Miami needing a win to get into the thick of the battle. New England with a victory today would then be tied with Buffalo atop the division at 6-3. and three. Indy lost earlier, would fall a game back, and for Miami it would push them two behind the leaders. Well, Jimmy Johnson, he didn't avoid the issue coming into this week. He says these next two games will determine our season. If things continue to go where they are today, he's going to have to rethink and, and give his team some hope somehow and tell them, well, we can still get in. we got to win this week and somewhere down the line try to make up some ground. Jim Bowens is the guy that's down. And we're going to see what happens to him here. He's right in the middle. He puts his arm in on Curtis Martin, and his own man hits his arm, and that's what he's holding. That's one of those hyperextended elbow. But you know, the thing about it is when you, when you when you come out in the beginning of the season, Dick, that one of the things 
your objective. Your first objective is you got to win our division. We have to win in our division and win our division. Actually, again, I'll repeat that four and four, Jimmy Johnson and the Miami Dolphins were in a great position because they had only lost one game in their division. That was to Indy. Drew Bledsoe, second down and nine at the 10-yard line. is just a handful of yards away from his best ever game. Remember that Minnesota game where he threw the ball 70 times a couple of years ago, 45 completions, 426 yards. He has 414 against Miami today. There's the total by quarter. Started and has just progressed through the course of the game. It's uh, a first and goal at the five, leading 28-17. When it appeared that Miami, with a 17-14 lead earlier in this second half, had the ball on a turnover, an interception by Wooden at the 28-yard uh, line of the Patriots, and then a controversial fumble that has really turned the game around when uh, the Patriots recovered a questionable fumble. Seven o'clock programming will begin right after the ball game, including Dateline Sunday. Jane Pauley is going to be talking with uh, Michael Jordan. You'll see the uh, comedy's Third Rock from the Sun and Boston Common, and Jim Carrey stars in Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Dan Marino's in that as well. Viewers in the West Coast of Coast will see that at their regularly scheduled times. 5.47 left. It's a uh, miracle time now for Marino and Miami. Still on his feet. What an effort. And out to the 35-yard line. What a weekend for fans in Boston to cheer great sports heroes that come to visit. Michael Jordan was here Friday night as the Bulls won, and the great one, Wayne Gretzky, for the Rangers against the Bruins last night, and Dan Marino on Sunday. If you had that trifecta as a fan, those tickets to those games, and I'm sure we could find many here at Foxborough tonight. What a weekend. Yeah, and if we had room for one more picture, we had Phil Sims here on his birthday. Yeah, right. Which would have been just a joy for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you, anyway? I can't eat another piece of birthday. <laughs> How many cakes does he get? I don't know. the ground there's just no reason for it for like conduct you bet number 85 miami 15. you, know, don't, you, you don't have that look on your face because you did it take a look what lamar thomas does now there's ray he hits him all right now you're down but he doesn't leave it there he goes back in and hits him again and that's when they threw the flag still a first down even with a 15-yard penalty takes it back to the 48. See, if you're going to hit someone like that go up and get willie mcginnis hit him 
And then he'll throw you into the stadium. <laughs> right for Marino. He comes it off to the left. And a good job by Bernie Parmalee. Tackled by McGinnis inside the 40. Another Miami first down. And uh, Marino racking up some passing yards here in the fourth quarter as he's less than 100 away from 50,000 in his great career. Try by McDuffie, but covered by Reynolds. Flag down. That's where the little holding deal. Yes. Illegal use of hands. Number 69. Jam to the head. 10 yards. Jab to the head. That's Keith Sims. Sims. You know, when, when you looked at Miami in this game, they came out with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar running the ball, and they really had control of what they were doing. You know, but, and you made the point. Yeah, go ahead. They're going to run the ball for a while. Let's go ahead and run it. But the guy you really had to stop is Marino. And, and, and then I really, I really believe that fumble that was not a fumble turned this whole game around in New England's favor, and it's been all downhill for Miami since. And yeah, we'll take another look at that. Abdul-Jabbar was clearly down. Miami had intercepted a Bledsoe pass deep in New England territory. Underneath, it looked as if uh, Marino's pass was deflected or his arm hit as he went for McDuffie. Marino now is uh, 383 yards away from 50,000. You can see the blitz by the New England Patriots and Ricky Reynolds, number 21. And Magruder. They both got a piece of it. They do a good job. Once they see Dan Marino raise his arms, the defender, go ahead and jump. And try to get in his way. So that's the one thing you try to do with Marino. I mean, most people know you can't sack him. I mean, you can, but it's almost impossible. What you want to do with Marino is make him hurry the ball. And uh, every coach says the same thing. you got to put pressure up the middle. Get in his face. You don't sack him very often. Do a good patience there. Charles Jordan, his receiver, drops the ball. Another update. Back to New York. Dick, look at the ending in Houston and Seattle. Al Del Greco looking for a game-winning field goal as time runs down. Michael McCreary with the block picks it up. Laterals to Robert Blackman, who goes the remaining 61 yards with just four ticks of the clock remaining. The Seattle Seahawks on the verge of a 23-16 win. That is now a final in the kingdom, Dick. Well, and big plays in the final seconds today. The Seattle Seahawks are the definitely the cardiac kids the last few weeks. Third down and 10. Check that 20 after the penalty. Well, Marino just does hurry that one away and tackled immediately as McDuffie. So very little yardage at the 46. We want to remind you that coming up on uh, Dateline, Michael Jordan and Mike Ditka on third rock from the sun and Shelley Long is a guest on Boston Common. And we welcome those of you who have seen Seattle's dramatic victory, 23-16 against the Houston Oilers. Miami's Jimmy Johnson led 17-14 earlier in this half. Bill Parcells got a gift call, a fumble that wasn't a fumble. New England stopped a Miami drive, and since that point, it's been all Patriots, 35-17. This is a fourth and long for Marino. Scramble. up top it's just going to keep hustling actually he was down at the bottom of the screen and it's fourth and 20 and what happens is Miami is trying to get Marino outside the pocket to buy some extra time to throw the ball down the field to pick up the 20 yards McGinnis uh, eight tackles two sacks forced to fumble he now has a seven sacks on the year he leads the Pats two forced fumbles in his third year from Southern California, he was a big number one pick, and now in his third season, really paying dividends. 
stepped on back at the six. Terrell Buckley got him. Let's see if it counts. It's offsides against Miami Dolphins. 36 yard run for Curtis Martin. That's more than he gained. Uh, offsides. Number 97 on the defense. Lined up in the neutral zone. And was declined. First down. That's more than his total for the whole game prior to that run. Aaron Jones. Yeah, you're lined up across the neutral zone. That's where they call it. But the funny part about this whole play is at the end of the play, they had to wait on Bledsoe because he stayed, Dick, all the way back here by the 40 because he figured it's got to be against us. Well, it was the second time today Curtis Martin had broken off a long run. The first time it was called back for Hardy, so he just assumed it was another offensive penalty. Bledsoe with over 400 yards passing and three touchdown blocks. Gives it to Martin, who has a couple of rushing touchdowns in the first half. Oliver stops him at the four. Martin uh, now has carried the ball 15 times for 13 yards and one time for 36. A couple of touchdowns. You know, Dick, we talked about it earlier. You look at this New England team and the offense especially. especially. I, I really don't believe they worry about the running game too much. They have so many weapons. We talked about outside the tight end. Uh, Keith Byers now coming in. Throw the ball, try to make big plays, and every once in a while you give it to Curtis Martin, who is also capable of making big plays. Patriots on a roll, going for their sixth win in the last seven games. Martin to the two on the carry. Chris Singleton and others on the tackle. Jimmy Johnson's watery eyes from the winds that have blown through the late afternoon here in New England. And the Miami defense. I don't know what you tell them. They played, They tried to play it safe, conservative. They gave up touchdowns. And then when they gambled and tried to be aggressive, they blitzed through Bledsoe. They gave up big plays for touchdowns. But again, I remember if they lose this ball game, which looks like they're going to do. They're down by 18 points. Is that this is only two losses in their division. They're going to go to four and five. Granted. But... Still, they've only lost two games in their division. But, but the impossible task is that they really would probably have to win well, they almost have to, all of their games. And next week becomes an absolute must no against question. Indianapolis. And so it will be for the Colts who will come down there after losing to San Diego at home. So it becomes a, a very uh, key game. There it is now with Buffalo beating Washington, New England, apparent winners. Indianapolis lost to San Diego. And uh, the Jets waiting to make somebody's life miserable as we come down the stretch. <laughs> and, and, you know, you, you were absolutely right. You said this earlier, and you've said it before, though, that the Jets are going to be the determining factor of who's going to win the AFC East. They're not going to win it. But they play a lot of teams really? want to. I got that down. Yeah. I got that part down. Now the question is, who, who's going to win it? Let's go back to the biggest play of this game. The fumble call that went New England's way. Miami had just intercepted a pass. Oh, this is the uh, call at the side of the game. This was insignificant because a Martin fumbled. It was ruled a touchdown anyway, and Burke, number 85, would fall on the ball. But the big fumble was the one Abdul-Jabbar of Miami with the lead 17-14. They've just made an interception. And here's that call, and this will be uh, talked about all week long in South Florida. That's for certain. That goes a bar down, then the ball pops out, and from another angle later. Curtis Martin, meanwhile, gets the hat trick, his third touchdown, and the New England Patriots roll it up 41 17. The thing that really made that play so bad on the call is that the, that the Miami Dolphins at that point in time were inside the 30 yard line on their way in to score. Now, again, you know, they, they could have scored, could not have. But they were on their way in to score when they took the ball away from them. Four touchdowns for New England. And Terry just does squeak that one through since uh, Miami led 17 14 and that fumble call was made. Well, Curtis Martin, three touchdowns. 42-17, New England, six out of seven for the Pats. Let's go to New York. All right, Dick, at Buffalo, what a day running the football the Bills have. This is Derek Holmes, 14 yards, his third touchdown of the day. He rushed for 122, Thurman Thomas for 107. The Bills knock off the NFL's longest winning streak. Redskins had won seven straight, 38-13. Buffalo at Philly here on NBC next week. Dick? 
All right, Greg, and uh, this New England will go for its continued uh, run as they play at New York, the Jets, next week. Phil, you know, you, you, you said something, you know, you see Drew Bledsoe there, tread the ball around, throwing for over 400 yards. Right. And you said that New England really, they don't, they're not concerned about their running game. I don't think they are, Paul. The strength of this team is throwing the football, the outside players, the quarterback. Then you sprinkle in a really good running back in Curtis Martin. And, and again, we've seen it today. They make so many big plays in the passing game. And, and, and it kind of goes back to what Bill Parcells said to us. Tongue in cheek, he goes, I'm the Doug Moe or the Paul West head of the NFL. <laughs> we try to score as fast as we can. We throw a long jumper. And then we just play a little defense and try to get the ball back again. <laughs> nice work, Tony. Your defense are not doing very well. That's right. Spikes takes it out to the 24-yard line. Let's go back to the fumble again. We'll give you another angle on it where you can see that the ground clearly causes the fumble. There's a big pile of humanity, and none of the officials apparently had a clean look at it. There he comes down, the elbow, and then the ball comes out. And you can clearly see Abdul Jabbar had the ball in his possessions. He hit the ground. When his arm hit the ground, that's when the fumble occurred. Well, here's Jimmy. He's going nuts because you can see it on the big scoreboard here. But the thing about it is when you say the ground can't cause a fumble, if you're being tackled and you're going down, it can't be. If you're in the middle of the field, nobody tackles you and you well, hit the ground, it, be a it is a fumble, just to clear it up. Dan Marino will not risk uh, any further injury to that ankle. Craig Erickson takes over with uh, two and a half to go. Fires down the middle, complete. Scott Miller to the 44. Flag down. Why not? So, a uh, disappointing day for Marino and Miami. Jam to the face, number 69. And that's yards. That's his second hands to the face first today. Down. That puts uh, Miami over the 100 yard mark in penalty yards. Key Sims, number 69. Gets a hand up on the face mask of Chris Slade. Easy for the official to see, easy call. 14th Dolphin penalty, 106 yards. Marino, less than 100 from 50,000. He'll uh, reach that incredible yardage total at home next week against Indianapolis. Erickson fumbled. No, he gets it off. Yard line almost looked as if that ball was going to be knocked free. Six yards on the play. McGinnis again harassing the quarterback, and we're at the two minute warning. You're watching the NFL on NBC. Left here in Foxborough as we welcome those of you who have seen Kansas City win at Minnesota 21 6 as the Chiefs go 6 and 3, and uh, the Vikes in a bit of a tailspin 5 and 4. Dan Marino and Miami were in the lead early in this second half, 17-14, and then it's collapsed on them. They got a bad ball. And then New England taking advantage of every opportunity. Bernie Parmley running it out to the 32-yard line. Marino watching Craig Erickson here in the final minutes finish up the job as the Patriots lead 42-17. A big passing day for Marino's counterpart in New England. Drew Bledsoe over 400 yards throwing the ball as uh, opposing teams continue to just rip apart Miami's fast defense. Parmalee picks up the first down out of the 45-yard line. Craig Erickson with the pitch. You know, talking about that Miami defense, Dick, this is the same defense, the same philosophy that won Super Bowls for Jimmy Johnson down in Dallas. And it's really the pass coverage has really not been that bad, but what's really made, magnifies it is the fact they just get no pass rush at all from their front four. A gallant effort by Lamar Thomas, who is ruled to have caught the ball, and the ball and the helmet pop free on contact with the ground. First down. 26 yards, a gutsy play. I mean, Lamar Thomas, he just went up and takes this ball away. He wants this catch, and here's what happens. His, down, his helmet pops off. You know, there, there is a timeout here. You see this, this great catch by Lamar Thomas. Malloy, Malloy coming in and just whacking him. You know, Phil, 
with like two minutes to go in a ball game, you're down by 25 points. You've already lost a couple of guys in this ball game. I'm talking about Miami now. And I know if, if you did it, you're going to get booed and written up by the newspapers. But I mean, don't lose anybody else. They already they already took Marino out. Just sit on the ball, get out of here, and don't try to get any. You know, I know you don't do that, but to save your players. Well, let's talk about Dan Marino. Not an easy day. His own receivers weren't always good to him. And the Patriots certainly were not. Hitchcock with an interception and Willie McGinnis. And if you hold the ball too long in this league, bad things happen. And boy, did Dan Marino get roughed up on that play. So Marino in the final minutes of the fourth quarter watches Craig Erickson try to get a cosmetic touchdown for Miami a minute to go. Erickson to the end line. Touchdown, O.J. McDuffie. Too little, too late, but 29 yards as Erickson against the defense willing to give takes, and Miami at least will cut the deficit. Well, the nice part about it, we're going to see our favorite play, the onside kick. <laughs> Craig Erickson showing some good mobility in the pocket, steps up, and when a quarterback steps up and you he gets that extra time like that, it usually enables the receiver to get behind the defense. And it's an easy touchdown for O.J. McDuffie. That goes back to the play with, when uh, when Hitchcock intercepted Marino when you said he didn't have a chance to step up and throw the ball that he wanted to throw. Going to go for two here. Erickson, four for four, 74 yards on this drive. And deflected incomplete. Erickson did a good job to give himself a chance to throw the ball as he was pressured. No, 42-23, New England's lead. How about another update? Let's go to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Dick, one more look at the play that ended the Cowboys-Eagles game. Troy Aikman scrambling throws into the end zone. The Eagles were up three, and this clinched it. The lateral from James Willis to Troy Vinson, who took it 90 yards to give the Eagles a 31-21 victory, knocking off the Cowboys in Dallas. Remember, Sports Night continues here on NBC. Jane Pauley talks with Michael Jordan on Dateline and Mike Ditka on Third Rock from the Sun, Dick. Now, Greg, down in the Lone Star State, they'll be talking about that with Dallas in position for a tying field goal only to be intercepted, and Ray Rhodes' Eagles are 7-2. I'm telling you, Dick, I can't, I hope, you know, I missed my plane, so I can stay over and watch Mike Ditka on, on Third Rock from the Sun. I'm going to tell you something, this guy is a natural coach, Ditka. Did you see those promos? Oh, he's, you mean he's not a natural actor? No, he's a natural coach. He's <laughs> <laughs> here play, and it's free for a moment. New England had his hands on, had its hands on it, and uh, Miami says they've got it. One of the Patriots came to field the ball quickly, which, of course, you can do, and uh, could not recover it, and Miami comes out of the pile with it. Well, Keith Byers, who recovered an onside, onside kick last week at the end of the game, comes up and tries to get the ball before it goes to 10 yards, and it takes the hop just in front of him. Watch him. Number 41, Keith Byers. Well, he actually gets gets there in time and gets his arms under it, but not, not able to hold on to it. Looked like Bernie Parmley was the man. Yep, he pulled it out of the pile. Watch Keith Byers. He comes up, does a good job. Just not, an, not able to, to hold on to it. And Bernie Parmley does the old pull it from everybody at the bottom of the pile trick. You know, the amazing thing about you kick an onside kick, Dick, and you get the ball at the 36-yard line. <laughs> it's not like the, yeah, it's it's not like the 40 right. before, you know. Get it at midfield. <laughs> yeah, 36. So 52 seconds left for Craig Erickson. Incomplete. Duffy, the target. Jim Gray is down on the sidelines. Dick, one thing about this drive right here is point differential is one of the tiebreakers for the playoffs if it ever could come down to that. They lost the first week. Uh, the Patriots did 24 to 10. So this drive would make it 42 to 30. And so the Miami Dolphins would win on point differential if they get in the end zone on this last 48 seconds. There he is, always with that old... Uh, Board out, figuring those numbers. Yeah, that's right. right. So we go down to that, and that is one of the tiebreakers. <laughs> the final tiebreakers. Erickson throws, complete. Obviously down was McDuffie, but the whistle hadn't sounded, so he figured maybe no one saw it. Clock running 33, 32 seconds. 
Erickson has been perfect off the bench. seconds left. Well, it'll be interesting to see. Next week, we're going down to Miami to watch Miami play the Indianapolis Colts, and well, what message does Jimmy Johnson give his team, and how will they react to this loss? Because I think they felt good about this match. I think they could come up here like they did a couple weeks ago. They beat Buffalo. I think they thought they could come up here and steal one from the New England Patriots today. Well, both uh, Jimmy Johnson and Dan Marino, Dick, they both really felt comfortable with this football game. They thought that they had a pretty good chance of winning it. But they're going to go home losing five of the last six after yeah. that 3-0 start. And New England's the team that's on the roll. They win six of their last seven. So we said in the opening, we talked about it. New England is winning. And you look at this game there, they make some big plays on defense. But Drew Bledsoe is throwing the ball down the field with his talent receiving core, and they are making a lot of big plays. That's going to be it. They're letting it run out. Drew Bledsoe, a 400-yard game, three. Touchdown passes, one a record 84 yards to Ben Coates, 42-23. The Patriots have defeated Miami.